Welcome to the Fantasy Audiobook. Sailing. Heaven Defying. Second in Command of the Straw Hat Pirates. Chapter 21. Unbelievable. Whispering. Is this true? This kid. No. Why is this posture so familiar? In Garp's disbelief, Bart suddenly looked up, raised his hand and swung the black knife Lei Yu, slashing towards the sea with all his strength. Whispering. God avoid. Jung Jung. Accompanied by the dark red cover, blocking all vision in front of him, the sound of breaking through the air from the slash resounded loudly, and it pierced through the endless sea with an irresistible force. The sea was completely split in half wherever the slash passed, until the end of the sea in front of him. Plop. Hoo hoo. Binos looked at the sea that was split in half by himself, with satisfaction on his face, and then, as if his body was completely hollowed out, he fell heavily on the beach and kept gasping for breath. Although his strength was doubled in all aspects, his body still couldn't easily launch this move. Although it was far worse than Roger and Shanks, Binos was still very satisfied with the result of this move. Ah, looking at the slash that disappeared at the end of the sea, Garp was so shocked that his jaw almost dropped. He stared at the sea that was split in two with his eyes wide open, and his nose couldn't help but run. It took him a while to come back to his senses and rub his eyes. Although he didn't dare to accept the fact in front of him, he couldn't help but believe this real scene. What a joke. Binos really used the terrifying move of Conqueror's entanglement. And this kid even wrapped Conqueror's hockey around the blade and merged it with the slash. Garp's eyes were filled with shock. If the person who launched this move was a big pirate in the new world, he could still accept it. But the person who launched the tyrant entanglement slash was an eight-year-old kid. Even if he searched the whole world, he couldn't find a second one with such a terrifying talent and understanding. If there is only one person who can awaken Conqueror's Hockey among millions of people, then the one who controls Conqueror's Hockey is the real king of the sea. Such as rocks who dominated the entire New World more than 30 years ago, the deceased pirate King Roger, Whitebeard Newgate, and Pluton Rayleigh, the right arm of Roger Pirates. These guys standing at the top of the world can face countless enemies alone. Of course, they can stand at the top of the world because they have experienced terrible battles facing death again and again, so that they can completely control Conqueror's hockey. And just now, I was just playing cool in front of Binos, the kid, and he just controlled the tyrant hockey. No, impossible, I don't know swordsmanship. Garp stared at Binos, who had already collapsed on the beach, and shook his head to deny it. Thinking carefully, recalling the posture of Bino swinging the sword, and the details of hockey integrated into the slash, made Roger's figure emerge in his mind. After seeing the big sword in Binoza's hand, Regu, Garp already had the answer in his heart, and murmured in a deep voice. Red hair, only the red-haired boy who was once a member of Roger's pirate group can know Roger's domineering sword technique, God's Bane. Garp, who understood everything, looked solemn, slowly walked to Bino's side, and solemnly confirmed. Hey, Bino's, is this slash that wraps Conqueror's hockey around the blade called, God's Bane? Faced with Garp's serious questioning, Bino's sat up from the beach, pretending to be surprised, and said. Ah, Garp, how do you know the name of the slash? Is it true? He finally knew why Red Hair was so fond of Bino's that he even gave him Regu, one of the 21 big swords. Garp sighed, a wry smile appeared on his face, and he was silent for a long time. Facing Bino's swordsmanship, armament hockey, conqueror's entanglement, even he, a legendary marine hero, could not see Bino's future clearly. But what can be confirmed is that if Bino's does not encounter any accidents in the middle, his future will undoubtedly be better than his. It seems that he has to work harder to completely trick Bino's into coming to marine. If this kid becomes a pirate in the future, he is really afraid that Binos will demolish the naval headquarters. Hee <laughs> hee, you are worthy of being my grandson. Follow me to naval headquarters, I will train you to be the strongest marine. With my help, it will only take time for you to become admiral of headquarters. When your achievements are improved, I will kick Sengoku off the position of marine admiral. Sengoku. Achu, who is scolding me from behind? It must be that old guy Garp. Ah, Grandpa Garp, can you really knock Sengoku off the position of Admiral? After all, I don't like being constrained. Bino's eyes flashed with a strange light, staring straight at Garp and asking. 
Garp's mouth twitched. I was not just bragging just now, you kid actually took it seriously, can you sit on the position of Admiral of Naval Headquarters just because you want to? Forget it, let's trick him to Naval Headquarters first, at worst, I can go back to the headquarters and tell Sengoku to abdicate in the future. Holding back his anger, Garp forced a smile and said, Ah, of course, it's just the position of Marine Admiral, in the future, when Sengoku abdicates, you will be the new generation of Marine Admiral. A black line flashed across Bino's forehead, he rolled his eyes at Garp, shook his head with disdain. Abdicate in the future. Grandpa Garp, you are fooling a child, I don't know when the future will be. No, I don't want to be a Marine. Hearing Bino's refusal, Garp immediately became anxious. If such a monster were to become a pirate, it would be terrible, even more terrifying than rocks back then. Hey, 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 Bino's, we have something to discuss. Although the position of Marine Marshal is too far away, let's start with Major. No, Commodore. No, I want to start with Admiral. That won't work either. I won't go. Quote dot 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 quote. In the hustle and bustle and the new hell training again and again, time flies, and three months pass in the blink of an eye. In the end, Garp failed to convince Binos to become a Marine. After sending Binos back to Mount Gorpo, he embarked on the voyage back to Naval Headquarters. Garp stood on the bow deck, with his arms crossed over his chest, looking at the gradually disappearing windmill village, his face full of complex emotions. He couldn't help but reach out and touch the shocking scar on his chest, muttering. As the tyrant slash more terrible than the divine avoidance. What a terrible kid. I hope this kid will be kind to me in the future and maybe be gentler on Marine. Mount Gorpo. Bang, bang, bang. Who is it? Which fool keeps knocking on my door? Dayton who opened the door, saw that it was Bino's, his eyes were full of impatience, and he crossed his arms and said unhappily. What for, little kid, weren't you taken away by Garp? Looking at Dayton, who was holding a cigarette and looked impatient, Bino's showed helplessness and was about to ask Luffy. Ah, please, but he was interrupted by Dayton's unpleasant voice. What are you doing here? Go, go, go. Just when Binos was about to ask with some force, a familiar voice came from behind. Binos, it's you, I thought you were taken away by the old man and couldn't come back. Turning around, it was Luffy who hadn't been seen for three months. At this moment, he was covered in mud and embarrassed. If you didn't know, you would think he had just climbed out of a pit. Hey, Binos, I haven't seen you for three months. Why do I feel that you have changed a lot? It seems taller. Regardless of the mud, Luffy was full of joy, ran to Bino's and looked at him carefully, and said in surprise. Hey, long time no see Luffy, how about the food here is not bad. Bino's looked at Luffy, who was a head shorter than him, and greeted him with a little teasing. Ah, although it's not as good as in the village, I have made two new friends here. They take good care of me. Not only do they share meat with me, but they also take me to challenge the big guys in the forest. Now my fist is faster than a bullet. As he said this, Luffy raised his thin arms and showed them in front of Bino's, revealing his confidence and pride. Bino's mouth twitched. Are you sure he is going to challenge the big guys in the forest? Ace and Sabo are not using Luffy, this fool, as bait for those big guys to attract the attention of wild animals. Ahem, really, it seems that you have made good friends here, Luffy. Bino's looked at Luffy almost unable to suppress the sneer on his face, and said with a light cough. Hee hee, Binos, I have another challenge with Ace, Sabo and the others later, let's go together. By the way, let's introduce Ace and Sabo to you, we can definitely become best friends. Luffy wiped the dirt off his face, thinking of the instructions to Ace and Sabo later, stretched out his muddy hand, and disappeared in front of the house with Binos. Darden looked at Luffy and Binos's back with a cigarette in his mouth, with a slight smile on his lips, muttering. What naughty kids, dot dot dot, swoosh, Binos, wait for me. Two young figures, one in front and one behind, kept shuttling through the dense woods, crossed several mountains, and finally stopped in a very secret place. Hoo hoo, can't Binos slow down, Luffy held his knees with both hands, panting heavily, looking up at Binos in front of him, complaining. Luffy, didn't I ask you to find out the nest of that big guy before? Why did you run back so quickly? Before Binos responded, an impatient voice came. 
Looking in the direction of the sound, a boy wearing a black jacket and holding a water pipe appeared on a tree not far away. Luffy looked up at the yellow-haired boy on the tree, showing an embarrassed face, scratching his head in response. Ah, I lost that big guy. Hearing Luffy's response, Sabo's mouth twitched and his face showed helplessness. Just when he was about to speak, he saw Bino's next to Luffy, and immediately became alert, raised the water pipe in his hand, and shouted at Luffy. Luffy, who is this guy? Why did you bring this stranger to our secret base? Luffy, you betrayed us. No, no, Sabo, listen to me. Luffy was shocked and waved his hands to deny it repeatedly, wanting to explain, but Sabo did not give Luffy a chance, holding the water pipe with both hands and smashing towards Bino's next to Luffy. What do you want to say? Wait until I tie this guy up. Sabo is not an enemy. Luffy was shocked. Although he and Bino's had not seen each other for three months, he was at least clear about Bino's strength. Even if Sabo was stronger than himself, he was no match for Bino's at all, and then he shouted anxiously to stop him. Stop it. Bino saw the sudden change in the plot and the water pipe approaching him, and his face showed helplessness. Whispered, can't we just have a good chat? Bang. Then he raised his hand to hold the attacking water pipe, and kicked Sabo away when he was shocked, and finally stopped when he hit a big tree. Cough cough. Sabo, who was sitting under the tree, covered his chest with severe pain, coughed twice, and spit out a mouthful of saliva. How can this guy be so strong? He looked up and stared at Binos who defeated him with one blow, gritted his teeth and spoke. Sabo, you misunderstood, he called Binos my good friend. Not an enemy. Luffy rushed to Sabo, lifted up Sabo who was kicked away by Binos with both hands, and explained. Your friend, could this guy be the poor fellow Binos that you mentioned before, who was taken away by your devil grandfather for three months? After listening to Luffy's explanation, Sabo was stunned, looked up at Binos who was not much older than him, and said subconsciously. Hey, 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 what poor fellow? Luffy, is it okay to make up your grandfather like this? The corner of Bino's mouth twitched. He didn't expect that Luffy would think that he was taken away by Garp to practice as abuse. It seems that the identity of this poor fellow is confirmed, but it seems good to be able to rely on this identity to establish friendship with Ace and Sabo. Luffy and Sabo were stunned, then looked at each other, and spoke in unison with serious faces. Binos this guy must have suffered extremely inhumane abuse after being taken away by the old man. Even if the devil old man was not there, he would still defend him. Not much, Binos yelled, who believes it? At this time, a figure walked out of the bushes not far away. He also held a water pipe, wore an orange shirt on the upper body, and black shorts on the lower body. It was Ace. As early as Luffy brought Binos here, Ace had been observing in secret. After all, the previous encounter made him feel that Binos was very strong, which made him alert and hostile. But after learning from Luffy that Binos was taken away by the old man and the miserable days, the hostility in his heart gradually dissipated. Let's put the abuse behind us. Let's get to know each other. My name is Ace. Ah, Binos, please give me more advice. The misunderstood Binos didn't care and introduced himself to Ace in front of him. Hey, Ace, since our secret base has been discovered by this guy, we have no choice but to let him join us. Under the influence of being abused, Sabo couldn't think of killing Binos, and Binos was so strong that if he joined them, the things he had planned before could also be carried out. Luffy saw Ace and Sabo accepted Binos, and his face was full of excitement, and he proposed. Great. From now on we are one. How about we be brothers? Dot dot dot. Mount Corpo. On the edge of a beautiful cliff, Ace held a bottle of wine and filled the four wine bowls on the stump. Let's start. He reached out and picked up one of the glasses, and smiled at Binos, Luffy, and Sabo in front of him. Sabo and Luffy took the lead in picking up the wine bowls, with smiles on their faces that could not be concealed, and then turned their eyes to Binos beside them and spoke at the same time. Benoise, don't be stunned. Ah, okay. Benoise, who was still in a daze, couldn't react to Luffy's brain circuits at all. He subconsciously picked up the last bowl of wine on the stump and responded. Luffy, Sabo, Binos, drink this glass of wine and we are brothers. Ace looked around at Luffy, Binos, and Sabo, grinned, and raised his glass. Bang. 
As the four wine bowls collided, Vinos and the other four cheered excitedly. Oh, dot dot dot, time flies, and soon it is the 1521st year of Li Hai Yuanli. Ten years have passed since they drank that bowl of sworn brotherhood wine. A man wearing a white shirt and grey cropped pants was lying on the edge of a cliff, listening to the sound of waves hitting the rocks on the shore. Hey, 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 Ace is quite capable, this is 550 million baileys. Holding a bounty in both hands, looking at the figure surrounded by blazing flames in the portrait, and the bounty of 550 million below, Vinos's mouth curled up slightly and murmured. Recalling the ten years since his soul came here, and the bits and pieces of his experience with Ace, Luffy, and Sabo, Vinos was full of emotion. Ace had already gone to sea three years ago, and now he is doing well in the Whitebeard Pirates. As for Sabo, he was taken away by Luffy's father after the fall of the Goya Kingdom, and now he is also making a name for himself in the Revolutionary Army. As for myself, it's hard to say. Once when I was drunk, I was fooled by Luffy, the fool, and I fell into the pit completely. Every time I think of that scene, Binos wants to beat Luffy up. Just as Binos was complaining, a man wearing a red shirt and a special straw hat, looking at the silly Luffy, spoke with an unconcealable excitement on his face. Hey, Binos, after today I will be 17 years old and can go to sea. Hee <laughs> hee, Binos, you promised to be the vice captain of my ship. You can't go back on your word. Bino sat up, rolled his eyes at Luffy who was still grinning, and said impatiently. Luffy usually looks silly, but I didn't expect him to plot against me when I was drunk. Forget it, it's no different to pursue the historical truth of more than 800 years that the world government has been extremely concealed alone with the straw hat pirates. I know, you have been nagging this sentence in my ear for 10 years, and it's not over yet. Luffy was not angry. He stretched out his hand to scratch the back of his head, smiling foolishly without saying a word. Binos shook his head, stretched out his hand to hang the big sword beside him, lay you, on his waist, stood up to stretch his muscles, raised his eyes, and instantly looked at the endless sea with a sharp gaze, grinned, and said seriously. Let's go, Luffy, turning this world upside down. Dot dot dot. The sky is endlessly blue, the sky is clear, and seagulls fly freely. On a cargo ship, the sailors are busy on the deck. Boom boom. At this moment, the sudden sound of artillery fire rang out, and everyone looked over, and the next second their faces showed panic. Following the gaze, a pirate ship appeared on the sea not far away, with a red heart painted on the flag skull. With the pirate ship's rounds of shells coming, and a large number of pirates landing on the deck, the cargo ship loaded with a large amount of supplies completely fell. At this time, ta-ta. The leader was a fat, ugly-looking Madara with freckles all over his face. He was holding an iron rod in his fat hands and looked extremely ferocious. It was Captain Alvida. Everyone on the ship saw the extremely ugly and ferocious pirate captain and subconsciously shrank into the corner with fear in their eyes. Captain Alvida looked at the rich businessman and sailors he had captured, and glanced at a short-dressed, short-haired, glasses-wearing child who looked very cowardly behind him. He said gloomily, Hey, Kobe, tell them, who is the most beautiful person on the sea? Kobe, who was already cowardly, heard Captain Alvita's sole inquiring question against his conscience, gritted his teeth and closed his eyes to respond. At this time, a figure jumped up from the sea below and landed steadily on the deck. Let me answer for him. Bang, it attracted everyone's attention at once, and they all looked at the young man who was soaking wet and carrying a large barrel on his shoulder. Just when everyone was confused, the young man spoke. You need a mirror and self-knowledge. Hearing the young man's words, Captain Alvita frowned and asked in confusion. Boy, what do you mean? Binos showed a look of disgust and spoke lightly. I don't know who is the most beautiful on this sea, but you are the ugliest I have ever seen. Face the reality, dead fat woman. Captain Alvita, who reacted, was furious. She has always been most averse to others saying that she is fat and ugly, after all, this is her inner pain. And now this boy dared to say such words in front of her, how could she tolerate it, you know, she is a big pirate in this sea. How dare you, boy, you have successfully angered me. Hearing this, Kobe was also trembling with fear, looking at Binos with worried eyes, and collapsed and murmured. It's over, he will be killed. Bang, 
Captain Alveda held a big iron rod and rushed towards Binos with his fat body, trying to smash the head of this ignorant boy. Go to hell! Facing Alveda rushing like a tank, Binos didn't care at all. He touched his hungry stomach and complained in a low voice. It's all Luffy's fault. He ate all the food that was supposed to last for half a month in five days. And the shipwreck in the original book was not avoided. It was a shameful opening. Bang. Just as he was thinking, the solid iron rod smashed down Bino's head. It's over. He won't survive after this hit. It's all my fault. If I had said it faster just now, he wouldn't have been killed. Frightened, Kobe quickly closed his eyes and murmured in a broken voice. Crack. The big iron bar hit the deck with a loud sound, but Binos, who was standing there, had already disappeared, which made Alveda stunned. All the people on the deck who witnessed this all looked incredible and widened their eyes. Not hearing the expected scream, Kobe opened his eyes and looked at the deck smashed by the big iron bar, rubbing his eyes in disbelief. Didn't. Didn't hit it. When Alveda heard the voice, her ugly face was so ugly that it was hard to describe under the extreme ferocity of anger. He raised the big iron bar in his hand again and smashed it with all his strength towards Binos who appeared on the right side at some point. This time, Binos would not indulge this fat woman in front of him, and raised his hand to firmly grasp the big iron bar approaching his head. No matter how hard Alveda tried, the iron bar could not break free from the restraint of the big hand. Facing Alveda in front of him, Binos showed impatience on his face and whispered faintly. There is still no movement. Luffy is probably dying of suffocation, right? Forget it, the farce ends here. Then he held the iron bar tightly with his big hand and exerted force, and a crackling sound was heard. Crack. Under everyone's gaze, the big iron bar was crushed by Binos with his bare hands, shocking everyone. Binos's footprints of more than 40 yards were imprinted on Alveda's fat face. As a sound of breaking through the air resounded, a meteor streaked across the blue sky. The pirates were so scared when they saw their captain being kicked away that they immediately dropped their weapons and jumped down to the sea at a speed of 100 meters per 5 seconds. Binos just glanced at them and did not intend to deal with these ants. At the same time, the big barrel on his shoulder made a sound, and Binos quickly put it down. Bang. Ah, I survived. Ha, huh. did Binos reach the shore? The next second, the wine cap was kicked open with great force, and Luffy jumped out of the barrel. After asking, his shriveled stomach protested. Gurgle. Ah, I'm so hungry, Binos, I want to eat meat. The sailors and wealthy businessmen on the ship, Kobe and others, saw a person coming out of the barrel, their eyes widened, their faces full of disbelief. Binos also touched his protesting stomach, showing an embarrassed face, and said. We haven't reached the shore yet, but I caught a ride on a boat, and I think it won't be long before we can get back to the shore. Gurgle. Everyone. Ah, ha ha ha, Binos is so ugly. Hearing the protest from his stomach, Luffy couldn't help but point at Binos and laugh. Bang. However, Luffy was only happy for a few seconds before he was beaten up by Binos's iron fist. It's quiet now. At this time, Binos noticed Kobe who was timid in front of him, grinned and greeted him. Hey, hello, is there anything to eat? Luffy and I are hungry all the way. The cowardly Kobe was startled by Binos's sudden greeting, and hurriedly bowed in response. Hello, hello, there is food, please follow me, both of you. As he said that, Kobe glanced at the cabin behind him and greeted. Hearing that there was food, Luffy, who had been covering his head, was suddenly very excited and followed Kobe quickly, asking questions. Ah, you are so nice, little brat, you actually prepared food for us. Faced with Luffy's rude behavior, the originally cowardly Kobe showed dissatisfaction and retorted. My name is Kobe, not little brat, and this big meal is not prepared for you, but for the gentleman next to you. You are just a byproduct. By the way, who are you? Luffy was not embarrassed and responded with a grin. My name is Monkey D. Luffy, a man who is determined to become the Pirate King. His name is Binos, he is my brother. Quote dot 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 quote. Brother. Kobe stopped suddenly, looked at Luffy with two rows of big white fangs, and then looked at Binos with a lazy face, with a look of shock. Do you also want to look for the legendary pirate King Roger's great treasure like countless people on the sea? Luffy nodded firmly. Yes, 
Seeing Luffy's determined look, Kobe believed it a little, but looking at Bino's and Luffy alone, he asked the classic line. Just the two of you. When these words came out, Luffy and Bino's blushed and showed embarrassment. After a few seconds of silence, Bino's coughed twice to break the original embarrassment. Ahem, the pirate group has just been formed. At present, it's just me and Luffy. As for partners, I think I will have them soon. Seeing the change in their expressions, the timid Kobe didn't dare to ask any more, and strode with the two to the restaurant on the ship. The people on the ship saw Bino's who solved the pirates and Luffy came in, and they all warmly entertained them. In their opinion, if it weren't for this young man's action before, not only would their goods be robbed, but even their lives would have to be explained here. Please come in, two little brothers. If it weren't for the little brother's action just now, we might not see the sun tomorrow. Please don't be polite, open your stomach and eat as much as you can, it's enough. Luffy, whose stomach had been hungry for a long time, was not polite either. He quickly found a seat and sat down, grabbing the food on the table and stuffing it into his mouth. Ah, really, then I won't be polite. Beano's, Kobe, I don't care about you. Looking at Luffy's impolite behavior, Kobe was about to speak to stop him, but Beano's beside him waved his hand, indicating that he should leave him alone. After all, Luffy's impolite behavior has not been for a day or two, and although his eating manners are a bit ugly, you will get used to it after seeing it more. However, the next moment, everyone in the restaurant was stunned by what happened in front of them. Even the cutlery in Kobe's hand fell on the table, and his eyes widened and stared at the figure opposite him like a beast pouncing on its food. Ah, this, Luffy stretched out his hands, constantly grabbing food back and forth on the long table, and stuffing it into the abyss-like mouth. This is not eating food, but like dumping garbage, pouring it in madly. Hey, 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 how long has this guy not eaten? Is there anyone who eats like this? What's the difference between this and taking out the trash? Should we not stop him? If this continues, the food on the table. Quote dot 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 quote. Everyone stared at the food on the table, which disappeared at a speed visible to the naked eye, and opened their mouths wide. Bang bang. As the originally rich food on the table turned into a plate of empty dishes, Luffy burped and patted his eight-month-old belly with satisfaction on his face. Burp. Finally recovered, so delicious. Ha, huh, what's wrong with you? Why are you looking at me like that? Aren't you hungry? Everyone. Don't stop me, I'm going to kill him. Kobe came to his senses, looked at the food disappearing on the table, and Luffy who was about to give birth, and whispered to Beano's who was enjoying the steak leisurely beside him. Mr. Beano's, does this guy always eat like this? Ah, you'll get used to it. Don't pay attention to him, he won't die from overeating anyway. Beano's didn't look up, still tasting the remaining soup beside him, and responded casually. At this time, Luffy, who had eaten and drunk enough, asked Beano's. Hey, Beano's, where are we going next? Beano's touched his chin and thought for a moment, then smiled mysteriously at Luffy and said. Of course, we are looking for our partner. That guy is an indispensable and important partner on our future ship. Luffy was overjoyed, stretched out his hands and suddenly hugged Beano's neck, and his body suddenly hung on him, telling his plan. Really, that's great, Beano's, my goal is to invite 11 people. Not only a navigator, a chef, a musician, a shipwright, a ship doctor, but also a historian. Beano's looked disgusted, stretched out his hand to pry open the head rubbing against his face, and spoke lightly. Okay, okay, you have told me this no less than hundreds of times. But before sailing, let's send this guy to a nearby island first. While Beano's was speaking, he pointed to Kobe beside him. Hmm, let's go. Luffy got off Beano's and looked at Kobe in the direction of his finger. He responded with a grin without objection. Although Beano's looked down on Kobe's cowardly character, this kid's cowardly character gradually changed after being accepted as a disciple by Garp. In the future, he will become an excellent Marine with justice on his shoulders. Not only did he risk his life to stop Admiral Akainu who was chasing Luffy in the summit war, but he also remained firm in his inner justice when facing the big boss Blackbeard. Although he was captured later, so that Garp broke into Blackbeard's lair alone and took over all the cadres of the Blackbeard pirates, resulting in unknown life and death. But this is not a disguised proof that Kobe is Garp's successor. 
As for the future predicament of the Straw Hat Pirates, Vinos has his own ideas. Now his combat power is no less than that of the New World Pirates. No matter how powerful the enemy is next, he can resolve them one by one. Even if it is the future summit war, he is not afraid. Recalling the scene where Ace was pierced through the chest by the hot lava, Vino secretly made up his mind that he would never let the original plot summit war appear again. I won't let you leave the stage early this time. Dot dot dot. The moment flew by, and several days passed in the blink of an eye. Vino's, Luffy, and Kobe, who were drifting in the endless sea in a small boat, finally arrived at the town of Shells. The marine branch is stationed on the island. It is said that there is a presence here that the surrounding pirates dare not approach, Colonel Monka. Binos and his group walked on the street, and Luffy behind him stuck out his tongue, looking weak and kept asking. Binos, haven't you arrived yet? I'm so hungry, my stomach is almost flat. Hearing Luffy's dying voice, Kobe covered his forehead with a face full of dissatisfaction. He and Binos prepared a lot of food before this. But who knew that Luffy, the glutton, ate up nearly a month's worth of food in just a few days, leaving no fresh water behind. If it weren't for the fact that he couldn't beat Luffy, Kobe would have beaten Luffy up. At this time, Binos, who was walking in front, stopped and looked at the tall wall in front of him, with a slight smile on his face. Whispering, finally here, I'm really looking forward to it. See you later, Roronoa Zoro. Kobe looked up at the tall wall and the symbol of Marine, his face full of confusion. Didn't he say that he and Luffy were going to become pirates? Why did they come to the Marine branch? He asked, Mr. Binos, what are we doing in the Marine branch? Luffy, who had just looked weak, was now full of energy. He ran to Binos and looked around, asking, Yes, Binos, are we pirates coming here to surrender? As soon as these words came out, Binos, Kobe's mouth twitched. For Luffy's stupid character, sometimes he really wanted to strangle him to death. Binos rolled his eyes at Luffy. He was a pirate who didn't even have a bounty, so he went to the marine branch to surrender. They had to accept it, and he could eat in prison for free. He sighed deeply and said in a deep voice, Luffy, the indispensable partner I mentioned before, he is inside. Ah, so you are not here to eat for free. Kobe, can I stay away from this idiot? When Luffy heard this, a flash of disappointment flashed in his eyes, but when he heard Binos mention the new partner, he immediately became energetic. Really, then let's go in quickly. As he said this, Luffy swung his arms and prepared to stretch his hands to cross the high wall. But he was stopped by Binos beside him and spoke lightly. Don't bother. Before Luffy and Kobe reacted, Binos took two steps forward and slowly pulled out the big sword Lei Yu on his waist with his right hand. Under the sunlight, the lines printed on the blade flashed clearly. He raised his hand towards the solid high wall in front of him and waved it casually. Jung, bang, the sword light flashed, accompanied by a loud noise, and the originally solid high wall was cut off in an instant. Cut, cut off, Kobe stared at the solid high wall in front of him being easily smashed by Binos, his face full of shock, but the next second he realized something, the shock on his face turned into fear, and he shouted. B. Mr. Binos, you smashed the high wall of the marine branch, you must be surrounded by marine. Let's go. As he said, Kobe's young figure couldn't help but take a few steps back, wanting to escape before marine could react. This is much more convenient, Binos. Luffy looked at the high wall that was smashed by Binos, and there was no surprise in his eyes, but a smile. After all, in the past ten years, he has challenged Binos countless times, and the final result is always a defeat. Not only that, he joined forces with Ace and Sabo, but still couldn't shake Binos at all. Among the four brothers, Binos is undoubtedly the strongest. Even the ferocious beasts and the king of the sea can't survive around under Binos's terrifying slash. Just when Binos and Luffy were about to enter the marine branch, a little girl ran out from a corner not far away, holding food in her hands, and ran quickly through the collapsed high wall. I was just thinking about how to get in. Thank you. Big brother, I'll go in first. Kobe, who had wanted to retreat, saw a girl younger than him running into the marine branch, and his face showed worry, and he gritted his teeth and spoke. Binos, Mr. Luffy, if that girl runs in alone, she will be misunderstood by the marine soldiers and arrested. Let's go in quickly too. Dot dot dot. 
The scene came to the central execution ground. Under the scorching heat, on the cross in the center of the execution ground, there was a man who was handcuffed with his hands, covered with scars and blood, and fainted. Big brother, wake up, I brought food. The little girl Lija looked at the miserable state of the man in front of her, her face full of pity, and gritted her teeth and spoke. Hearing the shout, Zoro, who had originally lowered his head, slowly raised his head, and saw that it was Lija, frowned, and said coldly. I'm not hungry, and you're an eyesore, leave now. However, Lija still didn't choose to leave, but took out a rice ball from the lunchbox, stuffed it into Zoro's mouth, and said with a smile. Oh leave, but I have to make you finish the food in the lunchbox. Faced with Lija's persistence, even if Zoro didn't want to, he had no choice but to let go of the rice ball silently with a barely perceptible smile on his lips. At this moment, the patrolling marine soldiers saw someone approaching Zoro, and hurriedly drew their guns and ran towards the execution ground. Someone actually sneaked into the execution ground. All raise your guns. Don't let anyone let Roronoa Zoro go. Shoot. More than a dozen marine soldiers raised their guns and pulled the trigger without hesitation at Zoro and Lija at the execution ground. These guys don't even let children go. Zoro's face suddenly changed when he saw this, and he wanted to push Lija away, but his hands were already handcuffed and he couldn't do it at all. He could only shout anxiously. Go, get out of the way. But the speed of the incoming bullets didn't give Lija time to escape, just when Zoro was anxious. Swoosh, bang, bang, bang. Bino stood in front of Zoro and Lija, holding the big sword Lei Yu tightly in his hand, swinging it continuously, blocking the incoming bullets one by one. Zoro looked at the dense bullets under Bino's feet, with a look of shock on his face. Such a fast swing. This guy's swordsmanship is not inferior to his own, and it is likely to be better than his own. And, could the sword in his hand be? A dozen marine soldiers on the opposite side, watching Bino swing his sword like an afterimage, blocking all the bullets, were shocked and stood there. How is this possible? This guy blocked all the bullets. Don't even think about rescuing Rorino Azoro. Shoot them all. Shoot this guy into a sieve. The marine soldier who came to his senses gnashed his teeth and wanted to shoot again to kill the executioner in one fell swoop. Suddenly, the originally hot execution ground suddenly raised a strong wind, rushing straight to the marine soldiers' heads. For a moment, the marine soldiers who originally wanted to pull the trigger stopped in their tracks, rolled their eyes, and fell to the ground with foam in their mouths. This sudden scene immediately shocked Zoro on the cross, and his mind was full of doubts. Although he didn't know why those marines lost all consciousness, he knew that the reason why these marines fell must be related to this guy in front of him. However, what ability did this guy use to make these marines completely lose their fighting power? Just when Zoro was full of doubts, Binos put the big sword Lei Yu in his hand back into the sheath and spoke lightly. Don't be surprised, you will understand it in the future. And the future you, but very strong. This made Zoro confused. What do I understand in the future? The future me will become very strong. It's right to want to become stronger, but if you want to become stronger, you naturally have to go through very hard hell training and accumulate time. There is also a more important point talent. How can he be sure of my future? Is this connotation, or ridicule? Oh, Binos, are these the three knives you mentioned? Luffy, who was ordered by Binos to retrieve Zoro's three knives, was now walking leisurely towards the execution ground with a big barbecue in his left hand and three knives in his right hand. Huvu, Mr. Lu, Mr. Luffy, wait for me. At the same time, behind Luffy, there was a panting Kobe, waving his hands as if he was exhausted, complaining and shouting. Binos nodded slightly, but did not take the three knives from Luffy. Although Binos is Luffy's brother and the strongest in terms of combat power, he is not the captain. This important recruitment matter is still done by Captain Luffy. Luffy also saw Binos's expression, grinned, and walked towards Zoro with three knives, speaking bluntly. Hey, I'll help you open the handcuffs, how about you be our partner? Partner, pirate, Zoro looked up at Luffy holding his three swords, and finally shook his head slightly and said in a deep voice. I refuse. As soon as this was said, Luffy, Binos and others frowned, and Lika was even more anxious. Although she hated pirates very much, if he didn't agree, Marine would definitely execute him. Worried murmur. Big brother, 
Just when the range was in a stalemate, a large number of Marine soldiers kept coming to the execution ground, and the leader was tall and wearing a Marine officer uniform. HMPH, you don't know how to live or die, you dare to break into the Marine branch and rescue Rorino Azoro. Binos looked at the Marines surrounding him, frowned slightly, turned to Zoro, and said seriously and meaningfully. Hey, Rorino Azoro, do you decide to carry your dream and join us on the endless free sea to realize your inner dream, or die in the hands of these Marines? Tell me your choice. Bino's words were like a strong medicine for Zoro, making Zoro, who was waiting for death, suddenly raise his head, and his eyes showed his determination for freedom and dreams. Forget it, it's not unacceptable to become a pirate instead of dying here. Thinking back to the promise he made with that person, Zoro slowly closed his eyes and muttered to himself. And I am carrying the dream that I have already promised with that person. Hearing Zoro's decision, Luffy couldn't stop being excited on his face, thinking, great. With Zoro, there are now three people. Really, you finally agreed, I was just thinking, if you don't agree, I can only knock you out and take you away. Zoro's mouth twitched, it seems that I have to be dragged away whether I agree or not. This made Zoro regret his decision, and he didn't know whether it was right or wrong to deal with such a natural captain. Fortunately, the other guy looked normal. Not only was he a swordsman like him, but he was also so powerful that he felt an inexplicable fear. Although he didn't know when such a terrifying swordsman would appear on East Blue, his days would no longer be boring with such a swordsman master on the ship. Binos, waiting to be abused. Hey, Captain, quickly untie the handcuffs on me. Luffy, who was still excited, heard Zoro's reminder and quickly opened the handcuffs on Zoro's hands. Oh, I almost forgot. Zoro, whose hands were released, raised his mouth slightly and spoke to Luffy with a firm expression. I agree to board your ship, but if you can't help me realize my dream, I will get off the ship without hesitation. Although Luffy didn't know the dream Zoro was talking about, he still nodded heavily. Zoro took the three knives handed over by Luffy, with a serious face and said in a deep voice. Become the world's greatest swordsman. Hearing Zoro's dream, Luffy resonated in his heart, after all, his dream is to become the Pirate King. But in his opinion, the dream of becoming the world's greatest swordsman is more difficult than becoming the Pirate King. Thinking of this, Luffy subconsciously looked at Binos beside him and grinned. Hee hee, it seems that your dream, Zoro, is more difficult than me becoming the Pirate King. Zoro naturally knew the meaning of Luffy's words, and looked at Binos, who looked lazy and yawning, with more fighting spirit in his eyes. Speak confidently, really, then please give me more advice in the future, Vice Captain. You're welcome, Binos was stunned, and then glared at Luffy who was making him hate him. Although he is also a swordsman, his dream is not to become the world's greatest swordsman, but to know the historical truth that the world government is trying to hide, and to control the world behind the scenes, the big boss, I am. Since Zoro has been recruited, Binos and Luffy have no need to stay here any longer and plan to leave. At this moment, a burly man with short blonde hair, dark skin, and a huge axe embedded in his right arm blocked the way of Luffy and others. It was Marine Colonel Manka. Humph. You want to leave in a swagger after trespassing on my territory. Binos and Luffy looked at each other and ignored them, still walking towards the marine gate. Behind him, Zoro was already ready, pulling out the three swords from his waist, reaching out to bite the Goto Aikimanji, which is also a large sword of the 21st work, in front of his mouth, and holding the two swords in both hands. Once these marines launched an attack, he was ready to kill his way out of the marine branch. However, when he saw Binos and Luffy, they seemed to be calm, but the marines who were blocking him were still walking. Zoro was puzzled and thought, could it be that the captain and the vice captain have the strength to completely ignore so many marines? Impossible, although Binos is indeed very strong, it is impossible for him to be so calm in the face of so many marines and the obstruction of marine Colonel Manka. Seeing the arrogant pirates ignoring him, Colonel Manka was immediately angry, raised his right arm with a giant axe, and roared. And like trash, dare to ignore this colonel, you are looking for death. Shoot, shoot them all into sieves. Yes, colonel. The marines who received the order from Colonel Manka pointed their guns at Luffy, Binos and others, and wanted to pull the trigger without hesitation. What a hassle, 
At this moment, Binos, who was originally drowsy, suddenly raised his eyes, and a flash of red light flashed in his eyes. Buzz. Instantly, the terrifying dark red conqueror's hockey swept in all directions. Bang bang bang. Instantly, the hundreds of marine soldiers surrounding Binos and his men were completely covered. In Zoro's shock, the marine soldiers all rolled their eyes, foamed at the mouth, lost all consciousness and fell down. Plop. What happened just now? Why? Dot why is my body? Even Monka, a marine colonel, knelt on the ground with his burly body, and his trembling hands struggled to support the ground. Cold sweat covered his body. Looking at Binos, his eyes were full of ultimate fear. How is it possible? What did the vice captain just do? Is this my future partner? What a monster. Looking at the marine who had completely lost his fighting power, Zoro's eyes widened and his face was incredulous. This was beyond his knowledge. It was terrible. Is this the strength of the vice captain Binos? It was ridiculous. I just asked Binos to give me more advice. Hee <laughs> hee, Binos, your conqueror's hockey is really convenient. You don't have to use it at all. Although Luffy has seen Binos release conqueror's hockey more than once or twice, every time he uses this power, Luffy is extremely envious. If Binos hadn't said that he hadn't reached the conditions for awakening, he would have done it like Binos. However, it was not only Zoro who was shocked, but also Kobe. Although it was not the first time he had seen it, every time Binos made a move, he was shocked. Following Luffy, Binos and the others walked out of the marine branch. With Liege's strong invitation, how could Luffy, who was already a foodie, resist the temptation of delicious food? Tavern. Zoro ate the food in the bowl, his face full of complex emotions. The scene that just happened in the marine branch was still lingering in his mind. He looked up at Binos opposite and couldn't help asking. Binos, what did you do just now? You didn't do anything, why did those marines suddenly lose all consciousness, even the marine colonel Monka couldn't move? If only those marine soldiers fell, Zoro could barely accept it in his heart. But Colonel Monka was a marine officer after all, and he was kneeling on the ground unable to move, which made Zoro full of confusion. Hearing Zoro's question, Bino smiled and explained. Ah, you mean the power just released. That power is called Conqueror's Hockey. Innate. Anyway, ah, you will know about this power later. Zoro nodded slightly and did not ask too much. After all, he is now a member of the ship, and he can ask Bino's later. But the strength shown by Bino's made him feel inferior. He did not expect that his swordsmanship, which he was proud of, was so unbearable in front of the captain and the vice captain. Thinking of this, Zoro secretly made up his mind that he could not be silent anymore. I have to try my best to catch up with Luffy and Binos's footsteps, and I must not be dragged down by him. After all, I am the man who carries that person's dream and becomes the world's number one swordsman. Binos naturally saw Zoro's thoughts, and it was obvious that the scene just now stimulated Zoro. Binos reached out and patted Zoro's shoulder, and spoke seriously. Don't worry, Zoro, you will become stronger soon. Luffy, who had his mouth full of food, said vaguely after hearing Binos' words. Binos, are you planning to arrange training for Zoro? Seeing Binos' posture, it seems that Binos is planning to make a training plan for Zoro. If so, Zoro's strength will be earth-shaking. You should know that he, Ace, and Seba were helped by Binos to improve their strength. Even the development of his rubber fruit ability was helped by Binos, and he completely controlled the second and third gears. Thinking of this, Luffy swallowed the food in his mouth, stretched out his right hand, grabbed the food in Zoro's bowl, put it back into his mouth, grinned, and said. Don't worry, Zoro. Binos is very good at guiding. Zoro frowned. Although he didn't know why Luffy was so determined, he didn't think it was a lie to look at the postures of the two. He nodded subconsciously and said with expectation. Really, so you're really looking forward to it? Ha, huh, where's my food? Zoro lowered his head and was about to taste the food in his bowl, but at this moment his bowl was already empty. When he looked up, his food actually went into Luffy's mouth. He suddenly burst into anger and roared. Luffy, give me back my food. Ah, don't be so stingy, Zoro. If you dare to reach out again, I'll chop it off immediately. Ah, sorry, stretch it out later, dot dot dot. After a lot of frolicking, Luffy, Binos, and Zoro were on the island. As for Kobe, 
he was thrown directly into the marine branch after being hit by Beano's and his three mixed threes. Finally, Kobe looked at Luffy and the other two with a bruised face, and was very grateful. He whispered, Mr. Luffy, Beano's, I will never let you down. Back to the endless sea. Luffy, Beano's, and Zoro sailed on the sea in a small wooden boat, but Zoro couldn't help complaining on the way. Although he admitted that Luffy and Beano's were very strong, you two should change to a better boat anyway. If it doesn't work, you can just rob one back. What's the point of this small wooden boat? Keep it for the new year. Thinking of this, Zoro felt the urge to regret agreeing to get on the boat. After drifting on the sea for several days, Luffy, Beano's, and Zoro finally arrived in a town. Just as Luffy and others were about to find a tavern to have a big meal. There was a noise in front, perhaps it was fate. Stop, little thief. Put down the nautical chart and bailey, or I'll chop you off. A large group of pirates, armed with weapons, were frantically chasing a girl wearing a pink shirt, short jeans, and short orange hair. Catch her first. Hearing the sound of pursuit behind her, Nami did not forget to look back, made a face at the pirates chasing her, and then quickened her pace to escape. However, turning around and seeing the three figures in front of her, Nami immediately recalled the familiar figures who robbed the freighter in Alveda. Captain, save me. A flash of inspiration came to her mind, and she suddenly quickened her pace and ran towards Luffy, Beano's, and Zoro, shouting. Hey, who is this Beano's? Luffy and Zoro looked at Nami hiding behind Beano's, looking puzzled, and asked. Beano's naturally saw Nami's little thoughts, but you came to the door yourself, so don't leave. After all, the straw hat pirates need a navigator the most right now, and he doesn't want to drift on the sea like a headless fly like before. He said casually, Ah, new partner. At this time, a large group of pirates chasing Nami saw that there were really accomplices, and they surrounded Luffy and his companions with weapons in hand, shouting angrily. Boy, be smart and hand over our boss's sea chart and bailey quickly, otherwise I will chop you all into meat sauce and throw you into the sea to feed the fish. Binoza's mouth curled up slightly, and he spoke with disdain and ridicule. Really, then, without waiting for these pirates to make a move, his eyes narrowed slightly and a flash of red light flashed across them. Conqueror's hockey was activated, instantly swept all the pirates surrounding Binos. Bang bang bang. The sound of falling to the ground rang out one after another, and these pirates lost consciousness and fell to the ground one after another. In Binos's dictionary, if the problem can be solved by Conqueror's hockey, he is too lazy to use the thunder guard on his waist. Nami, who was hiding behind Binos, saw the pirates around him losing consciousness and falling to the ground, and her eyes widened, muttering to herself. So, so strong. Did he do anything just now? He solved these pirates in the blink of an eye. Nami came back to her senses and looked at Binos and his eyes full of fear and fear, and smiled. Sorry, I was chased by these pirates just now, I hope you don't mind. I can give you half of what I got. But as a navigator, I really need this chart. As she said that, Nami took out half of Bailey and handed it to Binos. Binos stroked his chin and looked at Nami in front of him, with a strange look in his eyes. Thinking, ah, Nami now is very different from two years later. You know, Nami's figure two years later is very curvy. Ah, I thought it wrong. Hey, what are you doing? Nami subconsciously covered her chest with both hands when she noticed Binos staring at her with a strange look, her face full of shame and anger. Ah, sorry. As for Bailey, there is no need, but there is indeed something you need to agree to. Binos scratched his head with embarrassment, and then spoke seriously. Without waiting for Nami to react, Binos looked at Luffy beside him. After hearing that Nami was a navigator, Luffy made up his mind in his heart, grinned at Nami, showing two rows of white fang, and said. My name is Monkey D. Luffy, I want to invite you to be our partner. Zoro frowned subconsciously at his captain's careless behavior, and saw the deputy captain Binos showing a tacit expression. After recalling the experience at sea in the past few days, he really needed a navigator at the moment, so he simply kept silent. Facing Luffy's invitation, Nami looked around at Luffy and the other two, and spoke seriously. Join you, it's not impossible, but, I charge a lot of Bailey. In Nami's opinion, Binos and the other three are indeed very strong, and she has a good impression of them in her heart. 
If her hometown had not been attacked by those guys, it might be a good choice. But her current goal is to quickly earn 100 million baileys in exchange for the restoration of peace in her hometown. Binos shook his head slightly, smiled at the corner of his mouth, and spoke seriously. We don't have Bailey, but we can help you fulfill your inner dream and even completely solve the problems in your hometown. After saying this, Nami took two steps back, her face full of vigilance, staring at Binos and the other two in front of her. She didn't know why Binos knew her inner dream and the things in her hometown. But the only people who knew so much about her were the people in her hometown and the evil dragons. Even at this moment, Nami suspected that Binos and the others might be the people that the evil dragon used to monitor her. Thinking of this, Nami showed a hint of hatred in her eyes and refused to speak. Sorry, I don't know what you are talking about. Since you don't want Bailey, I'll go first. As she said this, Nami put away the Bailey in her hand and wanted to leave, but was stopped by Luffy. She asked in confusion, Do you need Bailey very much? What do you need so much for? In Luffy's opinion, isn't Bailey enough? It takes up space if you need so much. Nami subconsciously broke free from Luffy's hold, and turned to look at Luffy's innocent look. Am I overthinking? How could such a stupid guy be a subordinate of the evil dragon? Forget it, it's okay as long as they are not sent by the evil dragon. After all, these guys look very strong. With them, I should be able to earn a small goal quickly. Nami sighed and was about to agree to Luffy when a group of pirates appeared on the roof in the distance. They were the pirates led by Buggy. Captain Buggy, we found the little thief who stole our Bailey. The pirate holding a telescope looked at Nami, Luffy and his party on the street and reported quickly. It was indeed the little thief Nami. Buggy's eyes became cold and he issued an order to his pirates. Go, use Buggy's cannonballs to warn her and let her hand over Bailey and the sea chart obediently. Yes, Captain Buggy. After receiving Captain Buggy's order, the pirates under his command pointed the muzzle at Luffy and his party on the street. With a loud bang, the shells burst out and flew towards Luffy and his party. Binos, Luffy, and Zoro were the first to react. They stared at the shells approaching them and were about to block them, but after noticing the trajectory of the shells, they did not do anything. Nami, who was beside him, was frightened by the sudden shells and widened her eyes. She was panicked and sat on the ground. Boom boom. As the shells passed by Luffy and his party, the street houses behind them suddenly exploded violently, and the surrounding houses were affected in an instant, and the flames swept through. Nami turned her head and looked behind her. The house turned into a sea of fire. She couldn't help swallowing her saliva and her face turned pale. Looking at the direction where the shells flew, the crew members of the buggy pirates not far away were locking their guns on them. Buggy looked at the masterpiece of the shells, took the loudspeaker from his younger brother, and said arrogantly to Luffy, Nami and his party. Ha ha ha, have you seen the horror of Buggy shells? Little thief, be smart and hand over my bailey and sea charts, or I can't guarantee that the next Buggy shell will not deviate like the previous one. Faced with Buggy's naked threat, Nami was full of reluctance, holding the bag containing bailey and sea charts tightly in her hand. If she handed over the sea charts and bailey, the villagers in her hometown would continue to suffer from the torture of the evil dragons. If she didn't hand them over, she would never leave here alive, and even Binos and his companions would lose their lives because of her. Thinking of this, Nami gritted her teeth and accepted her fate. Holding the bag containing Bailey and sea charts in her hand, she raised her foot and walked towards the buggy pirates. Wait, at this moment, a hand suddenly grabbed Nami who was walking forward. Nami turned around and saw that it was Binos. Binos smiled at Nami with a reassuring smile, and then said to Luffy and Zoro. Since we are partners, how can I let you be threatened? Luffy, Zoro, they are in your hands. Oh, Luffy clashed his fists and looked at the buggy pirates on the opposite side, his fighting spirit rising, as if he couldn't wait. After all, Binos had been the one to take action all along, and he had no chance to take action at all he couldn't suppress his desire to fight. Compared to Luffy's eagerness to try, Zoro was helpless and complaining. Although the other side was the entire pirate group, pirates of this level of strength were just a matter of Binos's eyes. But since Binos had spoken, he naturally wouldn't object. After all, under Binos's swordsmanship guidance and tips in the past few days, 
he had a new understanding of swordsmanship, and it was just right to practice with these pirates. Nami's heart trembled, looking at Binos, Luffy, and Zoro, with complex emotions on his face, and a warm feeling rose in his heart. Wipe the wet eyes, Nami shook her head and said. Why? Obviously, this has nothing to do with you. You shouldn't care about me. Besides, you are pirates. Luffy looked at Nami seriously, grinning and emphasizing. As a captain, how can I let these guys threaten my partners? Don't worry, I'll go and beat them all up. Nami's body shook violently, and she murmured. Partners, if there were no dragon pirates, I really needed reliable partners like them. On the other side, Buggy saw that Nami and the others were still silent, and his patience was gradually exhausted. When he raised his hand to order Luffy, Nami and the others to be sent to the west, Buggy seemed to notice something and quickly picked up the telescope to look. Instantly, a ferocious and angry expression appeared on his face, and he gritted his teeth and murmured. The straw hat on that kid's head is. Shanks, that fool. For a moment, the hateful figure of Shanks appeared in Buggy's mind. Speaking of Shanks, Buggy couldn't help but recall the scene on Roger's pirate ship, which he still remembers. If it weren't for Shanks's fool, he wouldn't have eaten the devil fruit worth hundreds of millions of baileys and the treasure map that fell into the sea. Whenever he thought of this, Buggy wanted to kill Shanks and cursed inwardly. If Shanks hadn't stayed in New World, I would have made him pay the price. Humph, since we can't deal with Shanks, let's start with the kid with the straw hat. Thinking of this, Buggy's face was ferocious, and he roared at his subordinates. Fire, blast those guys to death. The pirates didn't hesitate at all, and fired cannonballs at Luffy, Nami and his group. Boom boom. For a while, the sound of cannons rang out, flying towards the location of Luffy and his group. Nami didn't expect Buggy's gang to fire without hesitation. Aren't they afraid that the Bailey and the sea chart in their hands would be destroyed? It's over. Don't worry about me. Go away. But the situation is urgent now, and she can't care about so much. She shouted anxiously to Binos, Luffy, and Zoro beside her. Rubber Rubber. Chapter 31. However, facing the incoming shells, Luffy went forward, mumbling as his ten fingers clenched and stretched turning into a large net to bounce the flying shells back. Dense net. Swoosh. The shells that bounced back directly hit the house on the left, exploding and roaring for a while. Under the raging fire, the surrounding houses were all implicated. Buggy stared at Luffy who had returned to his original state, with a solemn look on his face, and whispered. Devil fruit power. The subordinates looked at the house burning in the fire and the ten fingers stretched out, and their eyes widened in surprise. Did that guy just stretch out his ten fingers? Yes. Could it be that he is also a demon fruit power like Captain Buggy? Really, but it looks like some kind of paramesha devil fruit power. Just when his crew was shocked that the other party was also a demon fruit power, Buggy snorted coldly, stretched out his hand and threw off the black cloak on his back, ready to take action himself. HMPH, isn't it just demon fruit power? I'll do it myself, let these guys see the gorgeous buggy shells. The crew members under his command were all excited and said. Captain Buggy will do it himself. Great, I finally see Captain Buggy's most luxurious moves again. Ha 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 ha. Those guys who don't know how to live or die, they feel honored to have the opportunity to be personally attacked by Captain Buggy, even if they die. Buggy took two steps forward, pointed his ten fingers at Luffy and his group on the street, and said arrogantly. It's your honor to die in my hands. It's over. Special continuous Maki shells. Bang bang bang. In an instant, tiny shells suddenly appeared from the fingertips and shot towards Luffy and his group. Hum, what is this? An attack, how should I know? But what's the difference between such an attack and a bullet? Luffy and Zoro were stunned when they saw this, as if they didn't take these projectile-like attacks seriously. Hey, don't underestimate these projectiles, you too, be prepared to stop them. Binos yawned at Luffy and Zoro and reminded them. He naturally saw that these projectiles contained the power of the buggy shells that had just attacked. Although it was nothing to him, it would be troublesome if Luffy, Zoro, and Nami were hit. Three swords. Rubber rubber. Hearing Binos's reminder, Luffy and Zoro began to look serious, looked at each other, rushed out suddenly, and each took action, knocking away the densely packed projectiles one by one and chopping them into pieces. 
Boom boom. As the two figures attacked continuously, bursts of bombing continued to be heard in the air. As the explosions gradually subsided, Buggy looked at Luffy and his crew, who were still intact, and gnashed his teeth in anger. These two guys actually blocked it. Buggy looked at the moves he was proud of being broken, and stretched out his hands with sharp blades between his fingers. The crew members of the Buggy Pirates behind him saw the captain's actions, and they all showed their weapons, ready to follow Buggy's footsteps and charge. Little ones, follow this captain. Buggy gave an order and prepared to charge at Luffy and his crew, but before he finished speaking, he looked up and saw two figures approaching them, and his eyes widened immediately. One sword style 38 troubles wind. Rubber rubber machine gun. The sudden dense fists and slashes were rampant, and the buggy pirates had no time to react. They were blown away, screaming one after another, and buried in the ruins along with the collapsed houses. Nami, who was beside Binos, was shocked when she saw Luffy and Zoro's powerful moves. So, so strong. I thought Binos was the strongest among the three of them, but I didn't expect that the two of them were also strong enough to kill the entire buggy pirates in one second. As the battle ended, Bino smiled at Nami and said. Let's go. Now that Luffy and Zoro have solved the problem, Nami, don't you need Bailey? Let's go. Hearing that Bino's handed over the treasure of the buggy pirates to her, Nami was stunned and touched. She recalled the brutal dragon pirates and looked at Bino's, Luffy, and Zoro. She couldn't help but burst into tears. After a short silence, she showed a sincere smile. Thank you. Bino's waved his hand and responded. We are allies now, isn't it natural to protect our friends? Let's go, our pirate group's financial power. Nami no longer refused, followed Binos, and went with Luffy and Zoro to plunder the treasures on Buggy's pirate ship. Crack, one hand broke free from the shackles, and Buggy finally climbed out of the ruins with difficulty. If he didn't have the ability of Paramesha Chop Chop Fruit, he couldn't stop the continuous attacks of Luffy and Zoro just now. But fortunately, this is East Blue, otherwise if these guys could activate hockey, he would really die. But as the captain of Buggy, he was defeated by a few guys, how could he give up? He locked his target on Binos who had never made a move, activated the ability of Chop Chop Fruit, and launched a sneak attack. Quickly swept to the back of Binos. Kid, accept my grand funeral. Binos felt the crisis coming from behind, his face full of helplessness, even complaining. Hey. Hey, hey, do you think I'm the weakest? And I didn't beat you up, you should have attacked Luffy and Zoro. Binos didn't look back, subconsciously reached for the big sword lay you at his waist and pulled it out, slashing Buggy away with one blow. Binos didn't use hockey to attack Buggy, just slashed casually, and didn't suffer any substantial damage. In his opinion, Buggy plays a key role in the future world pattern. However, Buggy, who was chopped away by Binos, quickly activated the Chop Chop Fruit ability to avoid the slash that enveloped him. He did not intend to give up, holding the sharp blade between his ten fingers, and attacked Binos again. I am Demon Fruit Power. No matter how strong the slash is, it will not cause any substantial damage in front of the shattered pieces. Just surrender. Facing Buggy's arrogant attitude, Binos sighed deeply, and a wave of helplessness surged in his heart, and he said secretly. This guy really deserves a beating. Isn't it good to lie down in the ruins? He has to run out to be abused. Bang. Binos put the big knife Lei Yu in his hand back into the sheath, slightly raised his right foot that was gradually covered by black, and kicked towards the attacking buggy. Ah, boy, I will come back for revenge. With a scream, buggy's whole body turned into a meteor and completely disappeared in the blue sky. Ha, huh, it's finally quiet. Binos looked at Buggy disappearing in the sky, clapped his hands, and couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. Hey, Binos, why don't you decide to kill him? I feel that keeping that guy will probably cause trouble in the future. Faced with Buggy's repeated sneak attacks, Luffy and Zoro looked at Binos with doubts. They couldn't figure out why Binos didn't kill Buggy. Ah, that guy used to be Shank's partner, so just teach him a lesson. Hearing that Buggy used to be Shank's partner, Luffy was surprised. He didn't expect that someone as strong as Shank's would have a weak partner like Buggy. You know, he learned from Binos that Shank's and his friends became one of the four emperors in the second half of the Grand Line New World. Even the naval headquarters didn't dare to provoke them easily. Really, 
I didn't expect that he was once Shank's partner. So we really can't kill him. However, Zoro and Nami beside them felt familiar when they heard the name Shanks, as if they had heard of it before. Muttered, Shanks, this name is so familiar, I seem to have heard it somewhere. Ah, could it be that man? Thinking of this, Zoro and Nami suddenly widened their eyes, staring at Luffy and Binos, anxiously confirming. Luffy, Binos, the man named Shanks you two just mentioned, could it be red-haired Shanks? Binos and Luffy looked at each other, Luffy grinned and responded. Ah, that's him. He's a good friend of Bino's and me. And Shanks is also Bino's swordsmanship instructor. What? Hearing that Four Emperor's red hair is a friend of Luffy and Bino's, and is also Bino's swordsmanship instructor, Zoro and Nami couldn't hold it anymore, and they opened their mouths wide, shouting in disbelief. Red hair Shanks, one of the New World Four Emperors, is a friend of you two guys. Not only that, he is also Bino's swordsmanship instructor. Oh my god. Isn't this too scary? Faced with such explosive news, Zoro and Nami found it difficult to accept it for a while, after all, the other party is Red Hair Shanks, one of the four emperors. Okay, we have already wasted a lot of time here. It's time to set sail. Looking at Zoro and Nami who were still stunned, Binos shook his head slightly, interrupted their inner thoughts, and made a suggestion. Zoro and Nami came to their senses and nodded slightly. Without delay, they ran to the buggy pirate ship to plunder the treasures and prepared to board the small wooden boat to set foot on the endless sea again. Nami, who was still worried about the dragon pirates, gradually felt relieved after seeing the strength of Luffy, Binos, and Zoro. And being related to the New World Four Emperor's red hair, she gradually felt relieved and accepted to become a member of the Straw Hat Pirates. When Luffy learned that Nami agreed to become the navigator on the ship, he was immediately excited and shouted. Great, there is a navigator on the ship, and we finally don't have to trust Binos's intuition. As he said, Luffy suddenly stretched out his hands and hugged Zoro, Nami, and Binos around him tightly. Oops, seeing this, Binos's face changed drastically, and he flashed to break free from Luffy's death bondage. However, Zoro and Nami, who did not react, were locked tightly by Luffy's death binds, and then the three of them flew towards the small wooden boat on the shore like a cannonball. Ah, Luffy, I'm going to kill you. The screams echoed in the endless sea. Dot dot dot, the blue sea. At this time, on the small wooden boat, Luffy was beaten up with a bruised face and was so beaten that even his mother didn't recognize him. As for the masterpiece, of course, it was a mixed doubles by Zoro and Nami. Luffy, don't be lazy, hurry up and paddle hard. Nami had a big bump on her head her hands folded across her chest, and a serious face watching Luffy who was trying to paddle the oars. At the same time, after getting along with each other for this period of time, Nami discovered a serious problem. That is, before she herself joined the Straw Hat Pirates, how did Luffy and the other two survive the cruel sea? I'm so tired and hungry. I want to eat meat. And Nami, can we change Binos or Zoro to row? Luffy stuck out his tongue and looked weak, with a face full of grievance. Of course, meat must be paired with good wine. Zoro, who was half lying on the other side of the wooden boat, licked his dry mouth and said. What the hell are you two thinking about? I just ate an hour ago, is it over? And Luffy, hurry up and row. Speaking of food, Nami was even more angry. A lot of food was originally prepared, but only a few days later, Luffy, the big eater, wasted it and only three days were left. Ah, without wine, the food is tasteless. Nami, it's been an hour, and my stomach is already flat. Facing the noisy three people, Binos, who was sitting at the bow, had already entered an immune state, wiping his favorite sword, the Great Blade Ray, and remained silent. Shut up, quote, hearing Luffy and Zoro's complaints, Nami tried her best to hold back her rampage, regretting getting on this pirate ship. Sighing, calming down her anger, she patiently explained. Apart from your strength, I really don't understand how the three of you guys survived in this endless sea. It's okay in East Blue right now, but on the Grand Line, there are unknown dangers hidden there. I don't know how many pirates have been buried in the endless sea. So before you set foot on the Grand Line, you must be absolutely cautious and try to preserve your life and food as much as possible. Instead of being like this now. Especially you Luffy. Did you hear me? Luffy looked confused. He didn't seem to hear a word of what Nami just said. 
he scratched his head and said naively. Ah, can't eat meat, how can that be? Hearing Luffy's answer, Nami seemed to be deflated. She covered her cheeks with her hands. If she had felt a little regret in her heart before, she would have wanted to get off the ship immediately at this moment. She was really afraid that if she continued to get along with Luffy, she would really go crazy. Just when Nami was not going to pay attention to Luffy, Luffy, who was originally rowing the boat weekly, pried his bladder, his eyes lit up, and he saw an island in the distance. Nami Nami, I see the island, I want to eat meat. Hearing Luffy's shout, Zoro, who had closed his eyes to rest, also became energetic and said with a grin. And wine, Nami put her hand on her forehead, feeling that her head was about to explode. You two guys, bang, Binos, who was sitting at the bow, put his hand on Nami's shoulder and smiled. I'll get used to it slowly. Let's go, let's go to the island to prepare the next food. Soon Luffy, Binos and the other four set foot on the West Rob village. During this period, Luffy and his group met the future straw hat pirate sniper, Usopp. Luffy, who has always been naive and stupid, was fooled by Usopp's lies, but he finally integrated into the team. Two days later, Usopp secretly went to Kaya's house with gifts. Seeing the suspicious behavior of the housekeeper beside Kaya, he secretly followed him. Who knew that the so-called housekeeper was the black hand who killed Kaya's parents, the captain of the black cat pirates, Beiji Kuro. And he also heard the news that the black cat pirates were about to land in Zailuo village. Hearing this, Usopp, although always timid, was concerned about the safety of the entire Zailuo village. After struggling for a moment, he gritted his teeth and made a decision. He rushed into the dense forest with the slingshot in his hand without delay. Hiding in the best sniper position in the dense forest, staring at the black cat pirates landing at the port, trying to suppress the fear in his heart and shouting loudly. Stop, get out of Xiluobu village before I get angry. Otherwise, the 18,000 little brothers behind me will definitely leave you all here. Hearing the angry shouts in the dense forest, the pirates who had just landed were subconsciously stunned, and then they all laughed and mocked. Ha 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 ha, 18,000 little brothers, if there are really so many people, you should shout them out for us to see. The little brat hiding in the dense forest who doesn't know how to live or die dares to fool this captain. Hypnosis master Zangao looked at Usopp hiding in the dense forest, snorted coldly, and gave an order. HMPH, take this little brat first. Yes, sir. The crew members of the Black Cat Pirates who received the order drew their weapons and surrounded Usopp in the depths of the dense forest. Bang bang. Ah, kid, I'm going to kill you. Seeing his lie exposed, Usopp knew he had no way out, so he pulled up the slingshot in his hand and kept shooting, knocking down many pirates who rushed up. At the same time, Usopp's position was exposed, and he was chased and killed by a large number of pirates. Zangao looked at the embarrassed Usopp with disdain, and said gloomily with murderous intent. I have to say that you are brave enough, you dare to go against my entire black cat pirates alone. Usopp, whose left arm was scratched by a bullet, stretched out his hand to cover the wound, breathing heavily, without fear in his heart, but with unwillingness on his face. Is it over? I am a coward, and I can't protect Kaya and the entire Zilubu village after all. Looking at the pirates holding sharp knives approaching him, Usopp had given up resistance, closed his eyes, and waited for death to come. Ha! Huh, a gust of wind blew, and then an invisible pressure enveloped Zango and all the crew members of the Black Cat Pirates. At this moment, everyone's figures stopped instantly, including the sharp knife near Usopp's head, and then nearly a hundred pirates rolled their eyes, foamed at the mouth and fell to the ground. Bang bang bang! What? What's going on? Why did all these vicious pirates fall down? The continuous sound of falling to the ground made Usopp, who was originally ready to die, slowly open his eyes and look at the scene in front of him with disbelief. Yo, not bad, Usopp, this is a person fighting against hundreds of people alone. Wow, it's worthy of having 18,000 brothers. Usopp, you are so awesome. At this time, two voices came from a distance. Usopp looked at the source of the sound and saw that it was Luffy and Bino's. Luffy, Binos, how did you know I was here? Luffy walked up to Usopp and said with a grin. Ah, we heard from your friends that a group of pirate ships had landed, so we came. Hee <laughs> hee, you did a good job, you are worthy of being our straw hat pirate sniper. 
Hearing Luffy's praise, Usopp stood up suddenly without caring about the scratch on his left arm, put his hands on his waist, and said proudly. Ha 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 ha, of course, I am Captain Usopp with 18,000 brothers. Ha, huh, no, when did I agree to be a member of your ship? Luffy, Usopp reacted and shouted to Luffy beside him. He he, don't worry about these details. What details, I have. Bino's beside him looked at the two people who were quarreling, sighed, and whispered helplessly. Here we go again. Zangao, who stood up from the ground with difficulty, was wet with sweat and gasped for breath. He looked around and saw that hundreds of his brothers were lying on the ground, losing all their fighting power. Luffy, who was already pale, looked at Bino's with fear in his eyes. Although he didn't know what happened just now, he firmly believed that the existence who could knock down hundreds of people in an instant was definitely an unknown strong man. Even as a high-level hypnosis, he couldn't do this in an instant. Zangao suppressed his inner fear, stared at Luffy and Binos on the opposite side, and said in a deep voice. You, who are you? Hearing what Zangao said, Luffy and Usopp subconsciously stopped arguing and looked at Zangao, who had lost half of his fighting power under the pressure. Luffy was the first to grin, stretched out his hand to press the straw hat on his head, and responded. Ah, my name is Monkey D. Luffy, and I will definitely become. All right, all right, Luffy, just a little Karami, why do you have to introduce so much? Before he finished speaking, he was interrupted by the impatient Binos beside him. Ah, Binos, no matter whether he is a little Karami or not, let me finish first. By the way, where is Zoro? Wasn't he with you before, Binos? Faced with Binos's interruption, Luffy showed a dissatisfied look on his face, looked around, and did not see Zoro, so he asked. Ah, maybe he lost his way in life. Hearing Luffy mention Zoro, he remembered Zoro who was originally with him, glanced around, and his face showed embarrassment. At the beginning, Zoro was indeed with him, but after learning that pirates had landed in Xiluobu village, he rushed over without stopping. It should be possible that he lost Zoro at that time. Don't worry, that guy will be fine even if he is lost. Luffy touched his chin and thought for a moment, then nodded slightly. He looked at Zangao opposite him and spoke seriously. Binos, you have just dealt with so many enemies, leave this one to me. Binos naturally had no objection, after all, he was too lazy to do it himself. Swoosh, as the voice fell, Luffy's figure sank and moved quickly in front of Zangao. Facing an ant of this level, Luffy, who had been trained by Binos for many years, was not even qualified to start the second gear. Rubber rubber pistol. Ah ah, the extended fist blasted towards Zangao's face, and Zangao didn't even have a chance to react. Amid screams and blood flying, the whole body was like a cannonball, blown away by the terrifying force of the fist. Boom boom. It crashed into several large trees before it stopped, and a large mouthful of blood gushed out, and it was completely motionless. At this time, Nami, who was originally following Luffy, heard the loud noise coming from the dense forest, and hurried over, looking at Zango who was facing death, and hundreds of pirates who fell around. He couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief, and looked around at Luffy, Binos, and Usopp, frowning and asking Binos. Binos, where is Zoro? Isn't he with you? Where is he? Binos looked embarrassed and scratched his head. He couldn't say that he lost Zoro. He coughed twice and said. Ahem, Zoro said he had to pee urgently, let me go first. Okay, don't worry about him, he will show up when he should. Nami looked at Binos's perfunctory attitude, supported her forehead, sighed, and was speechless. Thinking, what's the urgency of peeing? Zoro must have lost his way. It's really... I always feel that none of the guys on this ship seem normal. Forget it, that guy won't die even if he meets those pirates. After all, a large number of pirates in the port are already heading here, and they don't have time to look for Zoro, who has a poor sense of direction. Just when Nami wanted Binos, Luffy, and Usopp to prepare for the arrival of the Black Cat Pirates. There was a fight and screams in front of them. Oh no, could those guys be going after the islanders? Usopp and Nami rushed to the source of the sound, fearing that those vicious pirates would attack the islanders. Only Binos and Luffy grinned at each other, as if they knew what was going on over there, and followed silently. Ah, come on all of you, 
I don't believe this green algae head can stand up to all of us alone. The leading cat brother stared at Zoro who was slashing and killing in the crowd, gritting his teeth in anger. They never thought that there was such a strong swordsman on this island. After receiving the order from the cat brother, the pirates swarmed and took out their weapons, surrounded Zoro tightly, and slashed continuously. Three Sword Flow 108 Trouble Wins But facing Zoro's fierce Three Sword Flow, the pirates who rushed up were chopped and flew away. In just a moment, the pirates of the Black Cat Pirates were all knocked down by Zoro alone, leaving only the cat brother on the opposite side. At the same time, Luffy, Binos and his group also rushed over. Looking at the pirates lying at Zoro's feet who had lost their combat power, Nami, Usopp and Chunin couldn't help showing surprise. Although they had seen the terrible strength of Luffy and Binos. But I didn't expect Zoro's strength to be as strong as a monster. He challenged hundreds of pirates by himself. Zoro noticed Luffy and his group and said with a grin. You are late, I am the opponent of these guys. Luffy and Binos, who heard the meaning of Zoro's words, glanced at the remaining cat brothers and naturally had no interest in intervening. However, Usopp beside him recognized the cat brothers with a bounty of seven million baileys on the opposite side, and his face showed worry. Binos looked at Luffy with concern. Luffy, Binos, is Zoro really okay? Luffy said with trust. Don't worry, Zoro's swordsmanship is very strong. Seeing hundreds of his men being dealt with by the green algae swordsmen, the cat brothers were furious and ignored Luffy and his group who came to reinforce them. They looked at each other, stretched out their sharp claws like cat claws, and rushed towards Zoro from left to right. Go to hell, green algae swordsmen, combined attack, penetrate. Just as the sharp claws of the cat brothers were about to penetrate Zoro's chest, Zoro tightly grasped the three sword flow, his body suddenly sank, and a sword intent flashed across his sharp eyes, and he shouted angrily. Three sword flow tornado. Whoosh. In an instant, a fierce tornado with a sharp slashing roar swept around. Disappear. Ants. The cat brothers' bodies were swept in, and under the continuous ravages of the sharp slashing blades, bursts of tearing screams were emitted. Ah. As the tornado swept towards the sky and gradually dissipated, the bloody cat brothers completely lost consciousness and fell heavily into the distant sea. This made Nami and Usopp stunned in place, and they kept muttering. So, so awesome. The cat brothers with a value of 7 million baileys were killed by Zoro in one second. Hearing that the cat brothers' heads were worth more than 7 million baileys, Nami, who was originally stunned, immediately reacted and said in surprise. What? The heads of those two guys are worth more than 7 million baileys. Ah, yeah, what's wrong, Nami? Nami stared at the cat brothers who disappeared in the sea with splashes in the water in the distance, and her face showed a look of pain. Sighing, she gritted her teeth and said, More than seven million baileys were wasted in vain. Hearing Nami's complaint, Usopp was stunned and smiled bitterly. It seems that Nami is worried about the bounty of the cat brothers. Then he whispered to Nami. Nami, although the bounty of the two guys killed by Zoro is worth more than 7 million berries, it is still slightly worse than the hypnosis master Zangao who was killed by Luffy in the jungle. What the hell? Originally Nami was full of disappointment, but when she heard that the hypnosis master killed by Luffy was more valuable than the cat brothers who were thrown into the sea by Zoro, her eyes suddenly lit up. She asked excitedly, then what hypnosis master killed by Luffy, how much is the bounty? Usopp touched his chin tried to recall the bounty of Hypnosis Master Zangao, and spoke. Ha, huh, it seems to be nine million berries. As soon as these words came out, Nami didn't care about the situation at all, picked up the rope she found from somewhere, and rushed into the jungle. Usopp was stunned when he saw this scene, and whispered subconsciously. Ah, you're not in such a hurry, are you? After all, wasn't that guy beaten to death by Luffy? Binos glanced at the direction where Nami disappeared, shook his head slightly, and thought to himself, as the controller of the financial power of the Straw Hat group, it seems necessary to be greedy for money. Just as Nami left, a cold voice came. I was wondering why my little brother under me hasn't completely occupied the entire West Rob village. So it's all you guys who did this. A man in a black suit, wearing round frame glasses, with a slicked back hair, a claw on his right hand, and grabbing the unconscious Kaya with his left hand. It was the Beiji Crow who was offered a bounty of 15 million baileys. Put Miss Kaya down. Swoosh. 
Seeing the unconscious Kaya in Beiji Crow's hands, Usopp was furious, raised the slingshot in his hand, locked the opponent, and launched an attack at high speed. Roared. Crow faced the attack with disdain on his face, and dodged one by one by slightly turning sideways. Luffy, Binos, and Zoro saw this, and frowned slightly, and had already sentenced Crow in front of them to death. Luffy took a few steps forward, and a pair of slightly angry eyes faced Crow who was holding Kaya hostage, and said in a deep voice. Put Kaya down. When Kuro heard this, he laughed instead of getting angry. He glanced at his subordinates who had lost their fighting power and said angrily and arrogantly. Ha 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 ha, kid, are you kidding me? Kill so many of my subordinates, be prepared to die. Don't worry, I will keep Miss Kaya until I have dealt with you, and then let her go. Although Luffy and his team were able to deal with all his subordinates, he was the great pirate, Beiji Kuro, who was offered a bounty of 15 million baileys. In this East Blue Sea area, he is undoubtedly the overlord. Even if these little ghosts in front of him are strong, they are not his opponents. Filled with anger, Kuro did not intend to test it at all, and decided to go all out to completely kill the little ghost in front of him who destroyed his careful plan. In Usopp's surprised eyes, Kuro's whole body seemed to lose strength, and he bowed slightly, while his hands fell down, and he took steps like a drunk. Usopp felt more and more uneasy when he saw this scene, and he quickly reminded Luffy in front of him. Luffy, be careful, this guy is the captain of the Black Cat Pirates, Kuro. Although they have seen the strength of Luffy, Binos, and Zoro, they are now facing one of the East Blue Overlords, Kuro. Kuro, who had originally lowered his head, slightly raised the corners of his mouth and showed a sinister evil smile. Hee <laughs> hee, enjoy the last time. Then the whole figure disappeared from the spot, as if he had never appeared just now. Usopp was startled and looked around constantly, trying to find Kuro's position. He knew that Kuro would definitely kill them at their weak point. Zoro beside him looked at the place where Kuro disappeared, but did not pay attention to it. Instead, the corners of his mouth slightly raised, as if he was getting more and more interested. As for Binos, he looked listless, stretched out his hand and yawned. In his opinion, Kuro's position was in full view. He said impatiently. Hey, Luffy, next time you train that power, this guy made my head dizzy. Ah, it's really annoying. Hearing Bino's complain, Luffy opened his eyes and decided not to waste time. Then he sank down, his clenched right fist close to the ground, and lowered his head. Enter. The next moment, his calves floated like springs, and then steam suddenly came out of his body, and his skin turned red. Luffy slowly raised his head his sharp eyes flashed, and whispered. Gear 2, Klo, who was moving at high speed, saw Luffy's body steaming and his skin flushed, and frowned slightly. Although he didn't know what happened to this kid, as a great pirate, how could he be scared by the kid in front of him? While moving at high speed, he stretched out his sharp claws, locked the target on Luffy in front of him, and launched an attack fiercely, with a ferocious look on his face. It's over, torn to pieces. As Klo's claws swept over, just as he was about to tear Luffy's body apart, Luffy's figure suddenly turned into a residual image and disappeared on the spot. What? Klo watched Luffy's figure disappear in front of him, and he was immediately unbelievable, and hurriedly looked around. But at this moment, Klo's signature voice came from above his head. Rubber rubber jet pistol. Klo looked up quickly, and saw Luffy, who was surrounded by steam, stretched out his left palm to lock Klo below, and slammed down with his right fist. Swoosh. As the fist in Kuro's pupils grew larger, Kuro no longer underestimated Luffy in his heart, and hurriedly tried to dodge the attack with his own high speed. But the speed of the attacking fist was too fast, even if Kuro burst out all his strength to rely on high speed to dodge, it was too late. No. Accompanied by a heart-wrenching and unwilling sound, Kuro's chest was suddenly hit by the huge force of the fist. Puff, a large mouthful of blood spurted out suddenly, and at the same time Kuro's whole body flew backwards and hit the direction of the dense forest heavily. Usopp rubbed his eyes and stood there with his mouth wide open. He never thought that Beiji Kuro, one of the overlords of East Blue, would be killed by Luffy in one punch. Whispered, is this the strength of Luffy and his team? Too, too strong. If he had still had concerns about Luffy and his team's invitation to him before, he was completely convinced by them now. 
Looking at Kaya who was unconscious in his arms, his eyes showed a complicated look, he sighed deeply, looked at the vast sea in the distance, and raised his mouth slightly, as if he had made a decision in his heart. Speak seriously. Hey, Luffy, does the invitation you issued before still count? Of course, Luffy, who exited from the second gear state, stared at Usopp, and finally grinned and responded. Really? Then Captain Usopp reluctantly accepted your invitation. After hearing the result, Usopp immediately showed a high attitude on his face and said pretentiously. Great, we have a sniper in the Straw Hat Pirates. Ha, huh, no, I'm the captain. Luffy was excited when he heard that, but when he heard that Usopp was the captain, he frowned and retorted loudly. Tisk, then I want to be the vice captain. That won't work either, the vice captain is Binos. Are all the positions taken? Binos and Zoro smiled as they watched Luffy and Usopp quarreling. At this time, in the dense forest behind them, Nami dragged the dead Zango with her left hand and pulled the unconscious Chloe who had just fallen in front of her with her right hand, and walked towards Luffy and his group with great effort. Although he was sweating all over, he couldn't stop being excited when he thought that it would not be long before more than 20 million Baileys were credited to his account, and he kept muttering. We're rich, we're rich. A few days later, on the coast of Xiluo village. A light sailboat was docked at the coast, and Luffy and his party also came here. Oh, so cool. Is this really a gift for us? Looking at the new sailboat in front of him, Luffy was the first to be excited, with stars in his eyes. Zoro looked at the light sailboat, a layer of mist appeared in his eyes, thinking, finally, I have a decent sailboat, and I don't have to squeeze into that small wooden boat anymore. Compared to the excitement of Luffy and Zoro, Nami lowered her head, counting the handfuls of Bailey in her hand, and kept grinning. Mary, please take care of me next time. Binos looked at the Mary, which was like a partner, and said secretly. Kaya, with long black hair, wearing a long skirt, and a pale face, looked like she had just recovered from a serious illness, bowed deeply to Luffy and his party and thanked them. Thank you, if it weren't for your help, my life and the entire Xiluo village would probably have been taken by those vicious pirates. Although this light sailboat is a bit old in various aspects, please be sure to accept it as a thank you gift for saving the entire Xiluo village. Faced with Kaya's thank you gift, Luffy and his party did not refuse. After all, the Straw Hat pirates urgently need a ship that can safely sail in the endless sea. The designer around him did not delay and explained the operation method of the Merry One by One. However, among Luffy and his party, only Nami was listening carefully, and Usopp said goodbye to Kaya. Other Luffy and Zoro all ran to the ship to admire their new partner, the Mary. As for Binos, he found a spacious place where it was convenient to look out at the sea, untie the big sword, Ryu, from his waist, and half lying down with his hands on his head, enjoying the sunshine and the sea breeze. I declare, this exclusive position is mine. Luffy looked around and finally came to the bow, put his hands on his hips, and announced loudly to everyone on the deck. Kaya said goodbye to Usopp and arranged his own workers to carry the things needed by the Straw Hat Pirates on board one by one. Luffy did not say much nonsense when he saw this. In the name of the captain, he shouted to Binos, Nami, Zoro, and Usopp in front of him. Everyone, set sail, oh. Binos looked at the flag above his head, which symbolized the Straw Hat Pirates, and his heart was excited. He muttered to himself, as the Straw Hat Pirates established. Thinking back to the time when he and Luffy went out to sea, and now the Straw Hat Pirates already had five people, Binos couldn't help but curl his lips slightly. Whispering, the next partner is one of the main forces of the Straw Hat Pirates, Blackfoot Sanji. Thinking of the plot of the original sea restaurant, Binos subconsciously thought of that man. The world's greatest swordsman, Hawkeye Mahawk. Although he was not interested in the glory of being the world's greatest swordsman, as a swordsman, and a top-notch warrior like Shanks, his fighting spirit gradually increased. At the same time, he also wanted to know how far his swordsmanship had reached. Dot dot dot, Naval Headquarters, Marineford, in the Marshal's office standing in the most magnificent marine building. A Sengoku wearing a seagull military cap and a long black beard tied into a braid on his chin sat at his desk, looking at the information reported from East Blue. The next second, his indifferent face began to show surprise and whispered. Binos, 
Born in East Blue, about 18 years old, suspected to have awakened the legendary Conqueror's hockey. Records, broke into the Marine branch, released some kind of power, stunned all the Marine soldiers defending the island and Colonel Monka, and easily defeated the Crow Pirates, one of the overlords of East Blue. Awakening Conqueror's hockey at such a young age is really a dangerous omen. Is the new generation so scary? Sengoku saw the information about Binos in his hand, and his face became more and more shocked, even unbelievable. The newcomer who just went to sea has awakened Conqueror's hockey. It seems that Marine will have to pay more attention to Binos next. After all, the sea cannot allow the appearance of guys with Conqueror's hockey. Putting down the information about Binos, Sengoku picked up another piece of information, about 17 years old, wearing a straw hat. Finally, after seeing the name, Sengoku couldn't help but twitch his mouth. Monkey D. Sengoku suddenly had a headache. It was no wonder that this new pirate named Monkey D. Luffy was the grandson that old man Garp always talked about. Thinking of this, Sengoku was furious and whispered. What is that old man Garp doing? Didn't he say he wanted to educate his grandson to be a marine? How did he become a pirate? Sengoku sighed and shook his head slightly. He put down Luffy's information, picked up Zoro's information, and frowned. Roronoa Zoro, the three sword swordsman, once went to sea as a pirate hunter, and now joined Monkey D. Luffy's pirate group. Seeing this, Sengoku suddenly had a headache, reached out and picked up the Den Den Mushi on the table and dialed it. Hello. Sengoku, what do you want to see me for? Garp, come to my office. Kacha, without waiting for Garp's response, Sengoku hung up the phone directly. Ka ka, hey, Sengoku, why are you calling me here in such a hurry? You're not going to set your eyes on my snacks. That won't do. Soon after, Garp swaggered into the office, holding a bunch of snacks, sat down on the sofa, crossed his legs, and ate the crispy senbei. Sengoku looked up at Garp's carefree appearance, how could he look like a righteous marine, he looked no different from the garbage on the sea. If Garp wasn't a hero of the marine, Sengoku would have thrown Garp into the deep sea prison. Suppressing his inner dissatisfaction, he said seriously. Garp, didn't you say you were going to bring your grandson to report to the marine? Where are you? Hearing this, Garp was stunned, the senbei in front of his mouth didn't seem to be fragrant anymore, and he scratched the back of his head. Remembering some time ago, he returned to Windmill Village with joy, wanting to take Luffy and Binos to report to the naval headquarters. Who would have thought that those two little brats, like Ace three years ago, would secretly go out to sea to become pirates without my knowledge? This made Garp so angry that he almost overturned Dayton's bandit den. Ace had already given him a headache before, and now it was Luffy and Binos, which completely broke Garp's heart. What made Garp even more worried was Binos. You know, the strength of that little brat at the time was enough to hurt him. Now that he is a pirate, Sengoku has to bear the headache silently. Embarrassed. Ah, ha 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 ha, ah, it seems to be true. What, Sengoku, why did you mention this? Facing Garp pretending to be stupid, thinking of Monkey D. Luffy, Binos wiped out the entire marine branch as soon as he went out to sea. Veins popped out on Sengoku's forehead, and he wanted to rush up and beat Garp up. Sighing, he said patiently and solemnly, You don't know yet, do you? Your grandson and Binos, those two guys, just went out to sea and overturned a marine branch. Let's not talk about the strength of your kid for now, that kid called Binos, you have to tell me what's going on. A newcomer who is only 18 years old and just went out to sea can actually skillfully control Conqueror's hockey and knock down all the marines of the entire marine branch, including Monka, who is a marine colonel, who can't resist. Are you crazy or am I crazy? Sengoku's emotions got more and more out of control as he talked more and more. You know, Binos and Monkey D. Luffy come from the same place. It's hard not for Sengoku to doubt that the reason why Binos can skillfully control Conqueror's hockey is not due to Garp. Garp cursed in his heart. Luffy, Binos, those two boys, they just went out to sea and caused such a thing. As for the matter of Conqueror's hockey and Binos, Garp knew that he could no longer hide it, so he simply stopped hiding it. He put down the snacks in his hand, stood up, and slowly took off the justice suit on his body only to see that Garp had a hideous scar from his shoulder to his chest. Sengoku saw this scene, 
and his originally calm face gradually became solemn. Although he couldn't figure out why Garp showed a scar from his shoulder to his chest, he could see that this scar was not caused by Rox or the pursuit of Roger. But it's not right, if it wasn't Rox or Roger, who could have caused Garp to suffer such a serious injury? Could it be those guys in New World? No. Since the public execution of Roger, Garp proposed to retreat to the second line, and he didn't send Garp to New World at all. Could it be that, before Sengoku asked, Garp nodded heavily and told the story in a deep voice. Ah, this scar was left by that brat Binos ten years ago. What? After saying this, Sengoku stood up suddenly, staring at Garp, and shouted in disbelief. Ten years ago. Garp, do you know what you are talking about? How old was Binos ten years ago? This statement directly triggered Sengoku. It was not that he did not want to believe it, but it was too unbelievable. In other words, ten years ago, Binos, who was only eight years old, had the ability to leave such a hideous scar on Garb. Such a terrifying existence, even if you search the whole world, you can't find another one, right? As Garp told the story one by one, Sengoku couldn't help but open his mouth wide, stunned in place, muttering to himself. Not only awakened conqueror's hockey, armament hockey. In terms of swordsmanship, it is no less than the grandmaster swordsmanship of the marine. Garp, I have a grudge against you. Why didn't you bring such a monster back to the naval headquarters earlier? Now it's all right. Your grandson has been dragged to become a pirate. I'm going to kill you. Sengoku, who came to his senses, was immediately furious. He didn't care about his identity as a marine marshal and raised his fist to beat Garp wildly. Ah, old man, you are crazy. Bang bang bang. Garp, who was hit by a punch, did not show any weakness. He clenched his fist like a sandbag and wrestled with Sengoku. Outside the door, two marines guarding the door looked at the marshal Sengoku and Garp who were fighting wildly inside. One of the young soldiers asked the old soldier beside him cautiously. Ah, is it okay for us to watch like this? Don't you go in to persuade them to stop fighting? Putting them to stop fighting? Don't you want to give up your job? The old soldier who had seen many storms and waves glanced at the recruit beside him, with a look of disdain on his face, and said lightly. And how can we, the little Karami, persuade them to stop fighting? The two opponents are legends of our naval headquarters. Marshal Sengoku, the hero Vice Admiral Garp. Go up and give yourself a head. The recruit looked at the two people who were still fighting in the office, and said with some reluctance. But, no buts, just wait. However, before he finished speaking, he was interrupted by the old soldier. Soon, the office began to quiet down. Sengoku, with panda eyes, straightened his martial suit, sat back in his seat, and said in a deep voice. Garp, this is the first and last time. If I know what you are hiding, I don't mind throwing you into the deep sea prison. Monkey D, Luffy, Rorino Azoro, these two people have issued a bounty. Especially Binos, this guy is unique in both talent and understanding. If he becomes a marine, my position in the future may be his. But because of your negligence, such a monster has become the opponent of our marine. Faced with Sengoku's rebuke, Garp, with a big bump on his head, sat back on the sofa, lowered his head and remained silent. Sengoku looked at this old friend and sighed deeply, and continued to ask with a serious face. There is too little information about the three of them in battle. Most of them were solved by Bino's releasing Conqueror's hockey. While offering a bounty on them, I want to know the true strength between the two of them. Garp, I hope you can tell me seriously, what level of strength do Monkey D? Luffy and Binos have reached now. Garp frowned. In his opinion, no matter how strong Luffy is, he is only at the level of tens of millions of Baileys. As for Binos, he should have at least as much strength as those big pirates in New World. But how could he tell everything? After all, Luffy and Binos are his grandsons after all. Responded, Luffy's strength should be only about tens of millions of Baileys for the bounty. As for Binos, you can do it yourself. Sengoku narrowed his eyes and stared at Garp on the sofa. Naturally, he knew Garp's thoughts and nodded slightly. Well, Monkey D, Luffy is worth tens of millions of belly. The same is true for Orono Azoro. As for Binos, just being able to skillfully control Conqueror's hockey is already beyond countless pirates who have just set sail. He is considered extremely dangerous. 
Garp was relieved when he heard the bounty range of Luffy, but when he mentioned that Binos was considered extremely dangerous, Garp was worried and retorted in a deep voice. Sengoku. Sengoku frowned, looked at Garp with a serious face, and finally sighed deeply and shook his head. Forget it, the bounties of the three of them will be observed for a while. I will send a high-level combat force from the headquarters to test their strength. Let me. Hearing this, Garp showed joy and was about to ask him to go, but was ruthlessly rejected by Sengoku. HMPH. Guard the naval headquarters well. Thinking for a moment, Sengoku sighed and raised his head slowly, saying. Let seven warlords of the sea Hawkeye Mahawk go and test him. According to the intelligence, that guy is now in East Blue. Garp was shocked. Hawkeye Mahawk, the world's greatest swordsman. Garp looked worried and felt a little unreliable, saying. Is that guy reliable? Garp, don't forget you are a marine. Sengoku ignored Garp this time. After all, this was his biggest concession as the marshal of the naval headquarters. If he asked the high-level strongman of the headquarters to take action, it would not be a test, but a direct arrest. Then, Sengoku began to contact Mahak who was far away in East Blue. Watching Sengoku contact Mahak, Garp stood up from the sofa and walked towards the office door. Although he was eating the senbei in his hand, he felt heavy in his heart. Luffy, Binos, you two little brats, don't get caught. Sengoku looked at Garp's back as he left and couldn't help sighing. Although he has made the biggest concession this time, letting Mahak go does not mean just a test. If Monkey D, Luffy, Binos, Rorino Azoro's strength has already threatened the balance of the sea, he will not hesitate to let them be captured, even if it is unfair to Garp. Time flies. A week has passed. Luffy and his party replenished supplies on the way and set sail again. At this time, there are two more people on the ship, Johnny and Joseph who sneaked up and prepared to rob the Straw Hat Pirates. But they were defeated in an instant under Luffy's random gunfire, and while being tied up like a dumpling, they shouted with a bruised face. Let us go, or we'll be waiting for my boss Rorino Azoro to arrive. You'll all be in trouble. That's right, let us go. Ha, huh, Zoro. Nami was stunned, pointed to Zoro who was sleeping soundly in a corner on the deck, and said. Ah, are you two talking about him? Johnny and Joseph, who were still arrogant, were ecstatic and shouted loudly after seeing Zoro sleeping soundly in the corner. Brother Zoro, dot dot dot, Brother Zoro, the food here is too bad, I know a place with good food. Let's go have a big meal to celebrate our reunion. Johnny, with a bruised face, smiled and whispered to Zoro. Really, that's great, finally, I don't have to eat the dark dishes made by Nami. And this time I'm going to recruit a chef back. Luffy, who heard the sound, immediately stretched his ears over and said excitedly. Zoro, Binos, and Usopp beside them also nodded slightly in agreement. This chef must be found. They can no longer tolerate Nami's dark cuisine. It is almost killing them. Even Luffy, the big eater, would rather be hungry than go into the kitchen after tasting the food made by Nami. Just as Luffy, Zoro, Binos, and Usopp were imagining that there would be a chef on the ship next, the figure of the great devil Nami suddenly appeared behind them. Binos was the first to feel the coldness emanating from behind him. His eyes suddenly widened and he thought to himself, not good. He disappeared from the spot with a shock under his feet. Luffy, Usopp, Zoro. Bang bang bang. Ah. Dot dot dot. Under the guidance of Johnny and Joseph, the Mary headed towards the sea restaurant. At this time, a marine warship patrolling the sea not far away appeared in front of the Mary. Report to the commander. A pirate ship has appeared ahead. The leading marine officer on the warship listened to the report from the soldiers behind him, crossed his arms, and stared at the flag on the pirate ship in the distance. He said in a deep voice, Ha, huh, a newly formed pirate group. Alas, there are more newcomers going out to sea during this period than before. It's also because of what he said when he executed pirate King Roger. Let the originally peaceful and peaceful sea usher in the great pirate era. After sighing, Hobody turned around and gave orders to the marine soldiers behind him. Drive full speed and get closer. In the name of justice, stop all evil from going on. Yes, commander. Then Fist Hobody stood at the front of the bow and shouted angrily at Luffy and his group on the opposite ship Mary. Listen up, pirates on the other side. 
I am Captain Fist Hoppity of Marine. Put down your weapons immediately and wait for arrest. On the deck of the Mary, Luffy, Binos, Zoro, Nami, and Usopp came to the bow first after hearing the warning from the Marine warship on the other side. Nami and Usopp saw the lineup on the Marine warship on the other side, and said with worry on their faces. Luffy, should we change course? Yes, let's run away. Marine, Binos, who was beside Luffy, glanced at the approaching warship, stretched out his hand and put on the big sword Leiyu at his waist, and said lightly. Leave it to me, just as a pre-meal exercise. Swoosh. Before everyone reacted, Binos's feet sank, and his figure flew into the air like a cannonball. Captain Fist Hobody was surprised when he saw this. He didn't expect that a newly formed pirate group would not choose to escape when seeing the marine warship, but to resist them. Humph, you little brats who just went out to sea, are you going to resist me? You're looking for death. Such an ignorant rookie pirate group completely angered Fist Hobody. He raised his proud right fist and rushed towards Binos who was approaching. Bang, swish, the moment his fist touched the big sword lay you, Hobody felt that his fist had lost all control. Under Hobody's shocked and incredible eyes, his fist and arm were completely separated, and blood splattered. Ah, as the severe pain filled his brain, Hobody covered the bloody wound of his lost right fist with his left hand and screamed continuously. Pirate, how dare you? Bang, before Hoppity could finish his words, Binos kicked Hoppity off the warship and said calmly. If you want to intercept us, you marines need to send more strong men over. Hoppity, who was kicked by Binos, spit out blood. He didn't care about the injury of losing his right fist. He stood up with difficulty and gave orders to the marine soldiers who were standing there in a daze. Quick, use all the shells to kill this pirate and the pirate ship on the opposite side. Ah, yes, Captain. All the marine soldiers who reacted quickly aimed their guns at the Marian Binos, ready to sink them at any time. Hoppity endured the pain from his broken wrist and chest and gave the order to fire without hesitation. All bombardment, sink these unforgivable pirates into the sea completely. Boom boom, Nami and Usopp on the deck were frightened and shouted. It's over, it's over. We're going to be sunk. What should we do? Luffy and Zoro's eyes were cold and silent, but their bodies were ready to attack at any time. Binos, standing at the front, looked at the densely approaching shells in the air, his mouth slightly raised, raised the thunder guard in his hand, and a flash of sword intent flashed in his eyes. He swung it down at the rapidly approaching shells. One sword flow returned to zero. Jung, a fierce light blue slash instantly crossed the sky, destroying all the incoming shells. Boom boom. However, just when all the marines on the warship saw the densely packed shells being solved, a slash suddenly appeared in the smoke of the explosion. Jung, without waiting for a chance to react, the slash instantly passed through the extremely solid warship. With a click, the warship was split into two and quickly sank into the sea. Boom, Nami and Usopp on the deck saw this scene and were shocked to the point of opening their mouths, staring at the warship that was gradually sinking into the sea. Muttered to himself, Cut, cut off, the warship was cut off by Binos. Such a shocking scene, even Zoro frowned, and even a hint of jealousy and surprise appeared on his face. After getting along for this period of time, Zoro thought he had roughly guessed Binos's strength, but the slash that Binos casually swung in front of him. It made him completely realize how far he was from Binos in swordsmanship. But at the same time, because of Binos, Zoro's inner decision was further motivated. Tap tap, Binos landed on the deck, sheathed the big sword thunder god in his hand, and looked up to see Zoro, Nami, and Usopp staring at him with strange eyes. Awkward, he asked. Ah, why are you looking at me like that? What's wrong with these three guys? Why are they looking at me like that? Did the power I just used scare them? Good job, Binos, your slash is getting more and more powerful. On the other hand, Luffy was excited and ran to Binos and said. Okay, as the building standing on the sea over there the restaurant on the sea. Binos scratched the back of his head and felt a little embarrassed, but when he saw the ship on the sea in the distance, he spoke. Ah, the slash was still too shocking for Zoro, Nami, and Usopp at the moment. It seems that the plan to grant enlightenment has to be advanced. Gurgle, gurgle, ah, really, I'm just hungry. Luffy rubbed his protesting stomach, 
looked at the sea restaurant in the distance, and couldn't wait to say. Nami, Zoro, Usopp and others who came back to their senses from the surprise also put the matter of Bino's cutting off the warship with one sword behind them. They all looked at the sea restaurant that was gradually approaching and said in unison. Oh, is this the sea restaurant? It looks cool. Let's go quickly, the smell is so charming, I want to have a big meal. Entering the sea restaurant, Luffy and his party looked around and saw that the tables inside were full of guests, and their faces showed disappointment. Luffy smelled the fragrance coming from the restaurant and couldn't walk anymore. He even wanted to reach out to the delicacies on the table, but this move was stopped by Nami. Just as Luffy complained, the door of the restaurant was pushed open again. A man wearing a turban embroidered with a red snake pattern and a pattern on his head walked in from outside the door. Get out of the way. After pushing Usopp away, he grabbed a seat, put his leg on the table, and shouted coldly towards the kitchen. Hey, chef, serve me. With this shout, the diners around looked up and saw the man in front of them, who looked ferocious and couldn't help shivering. Who is he? Are you going to cause trouble for the restaurant? I think this guy should be a pirate. In their opinion, only pirates can have such a ferocious attitude. Sorry, guest, I kept you waiting for a long time. I am the waiter of the sea restaurant. You can order whatever you want as long as you have enough bailey. The waiter Barati heard the shout and ran over quickly, with a flattering look on his face, and said with a smile. I don't have money, the man said coldly. Barati, who had been flattering, suddenly became gloomy when he heard that he had no money, and said unhappily. No money, what are you thinking about? Get lost, don't delay our business. The man did not move, staring at Barati with a pair of cold eyes, and said indifferently. I am the Krieg Pirates. Hurry up and prepare a hundred servings of food for me. As soon as this was said, the diners around were shocked, and even mentioned Krieg, many of the guests began to tremble slightly. What, is he a member of the Krieg Pirates? Hiss, the Krieg Pirates, known as the Overlord of East Blue. I have heard that the Krieg Pirates have more than fifty pirate fleets under their command, and even the nearby marine branch dare not fight them at will. It's over. Their crew members are here now, does it mean that the Krieg pirates have come around? After listening to the brainstorming, the guests in the restaurant were terrified. You have to know that the Krieg pirates are not like those weak pirates. They dominate the East Blue, and Captain Krieg is even more ruthless. Let's go. If we wait until the Krieg pirates arrive, we will definitely be killed by these vicious pirates. That's right, let's go. Thinking of this, most of the guests didn't care about the food on the table, and they fled the sea restaurant in fear, fearing that they would be killed by the Krieg pirates who rushed over. On the other side, Nami and Usopp heard these people's stories, and their faces showed worry. They wanted to pull Luffy, who was sitting at the table and eating, away. Hey, Luffy, let's go too. Yes, he is the overlord of East Blue, with more than fifty fleets under his command. Luffy only cared about the food in front of him, and he didn't hear a word about the East Blue Overlord Krieg Pirates mentioned. Zoro's mouth corners were slightly raised, and it was obvious that the other party had aroused his interest. Binos, who knew the plot, showed a hint of expectation on his face. Since the Krieg Pirates had appeared nearby, that man was also coming. The man known as the world's greatest swordsman, Hawkeye Mahawk. You have no money, and you dare to come here to eat. Get out of here. As many guests put down Bailey and left, the waiter Patty grabbed the man who wanted to eat a free meal and threw him out of the door. Plop. The man, who was already extremely hungry, was thrown wildly, and the severe pain in his body instantly filled his brain, making it impossible for him to get up in a short time. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.